know me. Um, if you don't know me, that means I'm doing a bad job, but um, I'm Paul Gazzano, I'm the principal of the high school. Uh, I hope your children, ninth grade children have uh, enjoyed the start of the school year and have found the transition from middle school to uh, high school to be a, a successful one. Uh, you know, for, for, for tonight, uh, we are going to speak into the mic just because we do have a, a good population of families who are streaming in live from home. And just so everybody knows that uh, at the end of the night, in a day or so, if you go to the Lawanto School's YouTube channel, uh, you can always go back to this stream because it is being recorded as well. Um, so this portion of, of uh, tonight's program is the AP Capstone program. Um, and uh, really, you know, my role right now is I'm going to really hand it over to the, uh, the experts on our program. We have three core teachers that run the program, Miss um, Jones, Miss Naughton, who do both our AP seminar and our AP research class, as well as uh, Miss Pepe, who couldn't be here tonight. So, um, you know, before I, I, I give it to them, I just want to share the, the work that they do with the children in the program is, is it, it really is, it's phenomenal. Um, you know, they're going to share a lot of the success stories, uh, what it takes to be successful in the course, which really, it's, it's, it's wanting to be there and, and work, right? But uh, for someone who sees uh, students not every day as, as they do, or as parents who see kids every single day as they come home, but uh, for someone who comes in and sees kids uh, who start the program uh, and then see, you know, where they are two years later in, in, in dips and drabs, uh, the, the, the growth and the growth of the, these students is just tremendous. Uh, the teachers do excellent work, and um, you know it's it's just uh, a great experience for those who want to be there and um, are willing to put in the time to really develop these critical thinking skills and uh, collaboration. And the four C's really that we talk about. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it off to our teachers. Thank you, Dr. Kazone. Welcome. Um, Hi. Uh, so I'm Heather Jones. I'm one of the social studies components of the Capstone program. Um, Ms. Pepe, who isn't here this evening, is the other social studies piece. And then um, this is Ms. Naughton, and she is our English piece. She is in both the um, seminar classes. We split between um, Ms. Pepe and I, and then we each teach um, one research class. Well, you teach, teach two, two this year. <laughs> So we, we are sure you have a lot of questions, but we want to start by going just through the basics of what is the course. The pathway to the AP Capstone Diploma or Certificate looks like this. AP Seminar is the first year. AP Research is the second year. If you score a three or above in Seminar and Research, as well as four other AP classes of your choosing, any, Music Theory, AP US History, um, AP art, art, history, whatever other four classes. If you get all a three in all six of those classes, you will get the AP capstone diploma. If you take all six classes and you do not get a three or above, you will still get the AP capstone certificate. So either way, you will be recognized for your above and beyond participation in the AP program in high school. Well, why take capstone? <laughs> um, so many of our graduates have reached out to us post uh, graduation from high school um, to let us know how helpful AP capstone was in their collegiate careers. Um, almost like three to five times a year, we'll get a kid reach out or a kid call us or a kid um, email us and let us know like how much it's really impacted how well they're doing um, at the university level. So here's a few of them. One student said, while there have been times when my relationship with the Capstone program has been bordering on love-hate, fair, there is no other class that I have found so worthwhile. I feel so much better prepared for college, and I know the skills that I have learned will carry over into nearly every aspect of my life. Sorry. <laughs> Another um, said, I've used so many things that I've learned in your class, not only in the second week, in only the second week of college. The transition would have been so much harder if I had not taken Capstone. So thank you for ultimately making college much easier for me. Our next um, volunteer said, it is a class that is really going to improve your reading, writing, and reasoning skills, and that helps in all your other classes. Even though it can seem overwhelming at times, it also helps to show you workload control. Okay, and then um, finally, this, this child says, you know, at the end of the day, capstone is difficult, however, <laughs> um, 
they really understood the impact that it has once they were outside of Wontaw and how um, Capstone has really helped them and overall it was a priceless experience for them and um, helped them to achieve in college. So, you know, it's nice. <laughs> Continuing the bragging portion of the evening, these are our AP Capstone scores for last year. Uh, continuing, I think, the last three or four years, we had a 100% pass rate in seminars, so there is a method to the madness. If you look at our mean score here, it was a 3.50 compared to the New York State mean score of 2.86 and the global score of 3.19. And in AP Research, we had a 95% pass rate with a mean score of 3.65 compared to the state score of 3.13 and the global of 3.33. You can see that Wanta students are really soaring in the capstone program. So over the years that we've um, been in charge of capstone here at Wanta, we've had the luck to have all these type of students who really show up for uh, the rigor of the class, um, are willing to work, they're willing to um, put in time and effort. Um, and this can be seen in the fact that we have a, a vast number of the valedictorian and salutatorian since we started teaching in 2017. Yes. And what we wanted to point out about this is not to say that capstone is only for a certain type of academic student, but rather this course is for students who want to push themselves. And the most important quality for a potential capstone student is that they want to join the program and that they're ready to go further than where they start from. So that takes us to this growth mindset. Um, growth mindset is probably the most important aspect of being a capstone student. You need to understand that you're not gonna start at the 100 grade that you may be used to getting in your courses because you probably are a relatively smart child. Um, in Capstone, we challenge how you perceive um, research and how you are able to find sources. And so with that comes a little bit of growth. You can't start at the top. That's what we're here for. We're trying to push you up to the top. Um, so it's very important for our students to understand that everything that we do is kind of pushing them up to that greater understanding, that larger um, global view of how to do research, how to um, analyze an argument, how to make better arguments, sorry parents, um, <laughs> how to um, have that skill set that they may not have gotten in any other um, type of class. Another name for this class is dinner time is going to become difficult. <laughs> um, the AP Seminar College Breakdown. This is incredibly different from any other sem uh, AP class in the building. So we want to show you the difference between other AP classes and the capstone classes right away. The AP Seminar score is actually composed of um, two, four, six different elements. There are two tasks, each of which compromise a paper and a presentation, as well as a more traditional end of course exam. However, Um, okay, so students who are taking AP Capstone, it's a twofer, right? So they are taking, um, in their sophomore year, they are taking AP Seminar. A AP Seminar also counts as their 10th grade honors English course. So they're kind of taking two at the same time. And that being said, it's really important for them to understand that if they don't do well in AP Seminar, they're not only not doing well in AP Seminar, they're also not doing well in 10th grade English honors, and vice versa is true. If they're doing well in AP Seminar, they're doing fantastic in um, AP, I mean, excuse me, in 10th um, grade English honors. Because this is a combination of those two programs in 10th grade, we will also be reading the same literature as the rest of the 10th grade. A few pieces left, but less, but we're, we're losing literature. We're picking up a nonfiction reading um, quite heavily. So there is a good balance, and seminar itself, College Board does actually require them to do some fiction and art analysis as well as nonfiction. Okay, so moving on to the second piece of AP Capstone. Um, AP Seminar is 10th grade, AP Research is in 11th grade. It's a wholly different course that builds upon the skills that um, we hopefully taught them in AP Seminar. Um, and you'll notice on here that there is no end of course exam. That does not exist in the AP Research um, category. What these students get to do for a year is choose a research 
kind of project or question for the entirety of the year. It's anything that they would like to do as long as it's within the boundaries of the school and ethics and all of that. Um, and 25% of that AP score is um, a presentation and an oral defense, which is a 20 minute presentation. It's amazing. Every year I'm like, get choked up because they're so awesome. Um, and then the 75% is their research paper. It's a 5,000 word paper that they work on. Literally, they just handed in the first thousand words in our classes uh, last Monday, Tuesday, oh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Um, so we have a good method to our madness. We keep them on schedule. Um, they love it. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> They will love it. <laughs> uh, as opposed to seminar, which is a 10th grade English course, this is an elective course that goes through the social studies department. So both are housed within our humanities department, um, but this one is an elective, so it doesn't have quite the same weight if you're struggling a little bit in this one. So, um, you know, there are many benefits to AP Capstone. I could go on for hours and hours and hours, but I do think that some of the more important benefits um, to me would be the middle one here, the acquiring critical thinking skills. This is something that they're going to take with them to every single class they ta take, math included, science included, history, social studies, that's the same, um, English. Uh, any of the courses they take in college, and then out in the greater world. I mean, it's such an important and awesome skill. I'm so jealous of these kids that they get to have that. Um, a little carrot for them would be that they get to earn um, a distinction on their diploma if they complete the course. Either way, if they complete the two courses and are successful with the other four APs, um, and then if they are not successful with the other four APs, they still get um, a diploma of um, certification. Yeah. Sorry, uh, certificate. And then they also have a lot of um, independence in terms of what they choose to study in both seminar and research. They have a lot more auto autonomy than they're used to in their other courses, which I find to be really cool and also helps them with that growth mindset. They can kind of see where they started in 10th grade and when they wind up looking at that in 11th grade, they can't believe how far they've come. So it's pretty cool. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, over 140 colleges have endorsed AP Capstone, and in addition, over 100 colleges in the U.S. have developed credit policies for it. We, you would have to look up college by college which ones, but it's it's going like wildfire across the country in terms of how colleges are looking at it. Oh, great. These are great questions to be asking yourselves and your students um, if they are ready for capstone. This is how you can um, help decide over the kitchen table. Uh, is your student excited about the potential challenge of AP courses? Does your student feel successful in ninth grade, especially in their reading and writing skills? Is your student good at time management or looking to improve their time management? Very important. Um, does your student enjoy being challenged? Does your student enjoy giving presentations? Or are they OK with learning how to give presentations? Um, does your student work well in groups? Is your student able to handle constructive criticism and peer feedback? Um, is your student able to take initiative? Does your student value education over grade? So these are the things you guys can be talking about um, at home and deciding with each other if this is a course for you or your student, really. We will now take your 6,000 questions. You may begin. <laughs> this is called wait time. There we go. I don't think it's saying are they, I, sure, it's asking, I think we're asking you if they're willing to improve. If they would like to improve, we're here for that. I love a hard worker. So anybody who's willing to put in the effort, I'm down with. I like that. I'm OK with someone who maybe struggled a little but is looking to improve that struggle. I think what we see most often is the students that have the most trouble with the class are the students that want to come in, get a 98 day one, and walk out. So it's that fixed mindset that becomes the most difficult. So you'll see a lot of times we say here, does your student enjoy, not are they good at? Do, is this something they're willing to try? And that's, I think, the crux of it. The students we see struggling are the ones that are used to seeing the grade as the outcome, as opposed to being able to step back and say, all right, I might get some lower grades at the beginning than I've gotten before, but that's OK. And we'll say to them all the time, you've never done this before. So it would be weird if you knew how to do it already perfectly. What 
So the question was, what happens if they start the capstone process and then they decide, no, nah, not for me? Um, we stare at them in the hallway forever. No, nothing. Nothing happens. It's totally fine. One, it's in this class it will have to be Thanksgiving because there is a group component to task one and the task one starts in November. Right, so so you do have to drop by the beginning of November to be fair to the group. of there and even if they take um, even if they take AP classes concurrently like in 10th grade sometimes kids will take AP world AP euro AP bio those also count towards the AP capstone program oh I mean they run so. the gamut <laughs> they're all over the place the question was what are some examples of AP research topics we, like Ms. Jones said before, the only way that we are allowed to sort of step on a kid's topic choice is if we have ethical concerns or safety concerns. Other than that, it can go from the impact of artificial snow from ski mountains on vegetation to content analysis of TV shows they're interested in. Marvel's been huge, I'm not mad. Um, a lot of Marvel, their favorite book series, what do they take out of that? Um, a lot of them are very interested in how students learn, which I find heartening that they want to talk about the best ways to learn. So it, in, in the eight years we've been doing this, I think we've hit well, every, every corner thing, of like the all world. All corners of research. Um, you know, we've had some spotted lanternfly, some, um, you know, RuPaul's Drag Race. There's been things like from here to, you know, Tuesday. It's pretty cool, actually, to watch.
talk about little r research and big r research. So little r research is like I went and looked up answers to questions, and that's what seminar is situated in. It's situated in the idea of that to make strong arguments, we have to know how to do effective little r research. AP research is situated in the idea of big r research, or how do we answer questions through original analysis of our own research. So one is the, I'm looking at peer-reviewed academic studies, the little r research. The other is, how do I test a hypothesis? And that's year one versus year two. Yes, research is every day. AP research. And it's a, yeah, they, you still have to take a, uh, US history in 11th grade for social studies. So when you're in CAPS and you take the two um, AP seminar and AP research, and then you can take four AP classes of your choosing and get a three or above, and you uh, will receive the AP capstone diploma. Yep. Yes. I mean, if you, even if you, yeah, if you took a class your freshman year, it counts towards the AP um, capstone diploma. Oh, sorry. The um, student and then parent. <laughs> we can't hear you, honey. Can you speak a little more? It's seventh grade research and debate is very loosely modeled off of this, um, but I haven't seen the curriculum recently, so I would not make that correlation. This is very clearly outlined by College Board. They're very specific rubrics. So while that is based off of it, there's a lot more leeway there for Ms. Pachulo to tailor to what students need. We have to answer to College Board. Oh, sorry, your turn now. <laughs> Um, I, I they can know. take other AP classes. I don't know about if there, uh, there's a science research component. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. In 12th grade? There's a time component that's very difficult because every single one of the 11th grade students has to do a 20 minute presentation. Um, so we actually have to do several days of that. It's, it doesn't feel fair because they already have a panel that might include, it's definitely awesome, might also have administrators to open it up to students for what is part of their score. We do have them go in and talk to the seminar students. Um, we don't necessarily go and do any kind of recruitment with with all of the ninth grade students from the 11th grade. I have to agree. There, we Every day in our classroom is precious time for them. So it's hard to, and they're so constantly presenting and people watching them, it's hard to add that component in. But um, the research, the AP seminar and AP research kids are always happy to answer questions if kids ask them. Like they're, they, it's something that they, um, get excited to talk about or complain. Or complain. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor. They like both equally. Yeah. yeah. 
I think I saw another hand somewhere. There's one there, one there. Three, okay, one, two, three. <laughs> You, it's college by college, like with any AP or college elective. It really depends. Right. Yeah. Do you, do you recommend hiring students a little bit of research behind the scenes? Or yeah. is that a good move to keep your crowd interested to find out if this information that a, that a college age transfer in, um, you know, this doesn't just match up necessarily to a course that a college offers. Right. It may just go over the whether it's science credit or humanities credit. Or an elective, um, yeah. Or elective credit. Yeah. You know, that the science may not cover things like, like that. Like debate, yeah. Well, but what we say all the time is this, and this, I'm, I'm the mom of a junior, so I'm <coughs> right there with you guys, and the, my, my stress level is incrementally growing. Um, one of the things I say, I wish my daughter's school had this program, and here's why, and we say it all the time that we wish we had had it as students. Your student's gonna have that uncomfortable growth moment from the, from the high school level to the college level. They're gonna do it when they're home with you, and it's free and you're, you can help them through it and you're, you know, they have the home support or they're gonna do it freshman year halfway across the country. But the skill set that they're getting from this, regardless of if it transfers, I guarantee you're gonna get that back the first year in what they're able to do. Every, I I'm, I'm, could not tell you over eight years of doing this, 30, 40 students have come back and said, my professor pulled me aside. Our professor asked us to come show them how they knew how to do slideshows like this. Our professor said, where did you learn to do your papers like that? My TA stopped me in the hallway. I had to start a study group because everybody else was like, how did you start the paper? I don't know where to start. So whether or not it transfers as credit, I can guarantee it will transfer as skills that will save them time and stress and money in the long run. I, I wish my daughter had this class. I really I did. I, I would also add, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about that, right? Because we're in 2024, who knows what 2027 or 28 sure. might bring in colleges. Uh, the other piece is, you know, this is an elite program. And when I say elite, it's prestigious, well-known uh, from high-level colleges, right? So even if that college doesn't take the credit, it sees it on the transcript. Mm -hmm. That transcript becomes that much more competitive than, than the next one. Um, so it's really about the question of, uh, is my child interested? Are they, are they, are they willing to put in that work a little bit to grow? And um, if so, then let's give it a shot, right? Because it's gonna make, it's good, you're gonna get the skills, and it's gonna make the transcript super competitive, whether or not it's got a transcript <coughs> in a couple of years. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Any, any last questions about Capstone? We have one more question. Oh, okay. All right, so we're gonna get, uh, come on, guys, we're wrapping up the, the Capstone program. The, the uh, 10 to 12 kids, and might as well get started. So come on down, everybody. Perfect timing. Thank you, ladies.
All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I am Paul Gazone. I am the, uh, the principal of Wantaw High School. I feel like I just did this, but I'm doing it again. I'm going to do it again in about an hour. Uh, I am in my fourth year here, and it's been uh, such a, a pleasant experience uh, being the principal of Wantaw High School. Uh, the kids are great. The faculty is tremendous, and the community is just amazing. So I, I couldn't be happier of uh, you know, where I landed. And uh, you know, for everyone else, I welcome to our uh, 10 through 12 curriculum night. Uh, before we get started, uh, this is just a quick list of our administrative team. Um, you know, I have the pleasure of working with each uh, and every single one of them uh, every single day. And uh, what, I, what I love most about working with this, the people up, up on this screen is that all our conversations always re revolve around, like, what's best for kids? What's best for kids? Um, and sometimes we disagree on what's best for kids, but that's good, right? We, we, we don't want to have a, uh, a leadership team where we all agree, like, where it's Pleasantville, because then you don't have good ideas, right? Like, we are like, debate, argue, look at different perspectives and come up with new, uh, new ways to, to innovate opportunities for our students. So uh, they are complete advocates for, for your children and for the students of Wantaw. And uh, you know, if you have any questions at the conclusion of the night, uh, we'll have a little bit of time of Q&A, but you can always reach out to them uh, concluding the program. Uh, at the conclusion of the program, I should say. Uh, also, I know we have a strong population of people watching from home, um, and for those who are here, so well, you know this is being live streamed and it is being recorded. So if uh, if you have any, you want to say, hey, uh, what did he say or what did they say? Uh, you'll be able to go back to the recording in a, in a day or two on the Wanto School District uh, YouTube channel. All right. Now, just really quickly, you know, I always throw uh, some stats up to start the evening off, and I really focus on only uh, really three just to kind of speak of. And the first one that I like to look at is the, um, uh, you know, 92.2% of our students in the class of 2023 were enrolled in at least one college level or advanced placement course. Um, you know, why I like to show that is, is that, you know, we have a, a breadth of opportunities for students in, in every department. We have college level courses, AP level courses, and if uh, you have a child who's more uh, geared towards a certain discipline or certain content, and, and maybe not so much in other areas, like we have opportunities for them to really challenge themselves with rigor at, at the college level and AP level. I mean, nine out of 10 students took at least one college or AP level course uh, in their time in, in Wanta High School, and, and you know, we hope that by the end of the time that you know, 100%, uh, you know, a couple years, 100% of our kids will try at least one. Um, and that's because of all the work that we do to try and make sure we tap into uh, the interests and the uh, abilities of our students and, and to make sure that we have something for everybody. Um, the next thing I like to look at is that what I have in a box. Uh, so what you see there it says 95% of our students return for a second year of college. The national average is 75%. Uh, and then the second component is 78% of our students complete a degree within six years. Um, you know, when you look at that, right, there's a difference of like 20%, uh, 16%, but in reality, when you look at like the percent difference, you know, our, our students are, are performing at a, t a rate of 25% more than, than the national average, just by going to want to high school, right? And why I like to show this is that you, know, you could, a lot of schools, when you do this night, or they, they talk about their, their, how well they're doing, what they talk about is, they talk about the students who went to college and where they went, right? But the truth is, you know, anyone who follows college sports, like, that doesn't exist anymore. Transfer portal has totally blown the doors off of everything, right? Um, you know, what are our students doing when they get there? Are they coming back for the second year? Are they getting their degree in four years, five years, six years, right? To me, that's what matters, right? So, and when you see, when you look at these numbers, that shows that our kids, when they're going to school, they're, they're doing fantastic. They're going back for the second year and they're getting the degrees. And, and for some, it might take five years, might take six years, but that's okay. They're getting it done. And we're doing it at a rate much greater than, uh, much greater than the, the level of national average. I would love to see where we look in New York, but that data is not available. I just have, this is just what I have. Um, but I, I think it's important to see uh, and show that it's not just about where our kids are going as seniors, but what are they doing when they get there? And we're building programs to help them do that. All right, so uh, you know, with that, uh, I'm going to open up the night and introduce um, uh, Dr. Whitman. Thank you, Dr. Gazzone. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your night to come here today. Um, if you look at the screen here, you'll see some of the new additions to uh, our course offerings for this year that are available um, in September of uh, 2024. Uh, many of these courses, though, are advanced courses, so they're not available to incoming ninth graders. Uh, but we would let you, know, let you know that these courses are out there and your children can look forward to taking them in the years to come. 
And make sure that you know that um, we're constantly updating our curriculum offerings and they're based on the needs and interests of our students. Uh, and that over the years, there'll be plenty of revisions and additions uh, that will provide your children with the best experience they could possibly have here at Wantaw High School. Okay, another thing that we're really proud of here is that we have, um, whoop, did I skip a slide there? Which one are we on right now? Hmm? Okay. I'm sorry. I was reading from the wrong script then. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, one of the things we're really proud of here in Wantor is that we recognize um, those students who achieve at the highest level uh, through many of our different honor societies that we offer here. Uh, and we recognize overall uh, academic excellence uh, and leadership as well as department-specific uh, honor societies for English, math, business, science, world language, um, uh, for those children who excel in specific academic areas. Um, and again, it's one of those things that uh, we're very proud of and the students are always excited about uh, because when we do have those uh, inductions, uh, the families are participating, students are um, honored, they get certificates uh, and they plan out the day for them to recognize their peers and so on. So it's always a very exciting day. And of course, we have the nationally recognized National Honor Society where we have the induction every year for our uh, students who go into National Honor Society. They're eligible in 11th grade and those who don't uh, achieve in 11th grade are able to again apply in 12th grade and get acceptance in the National Honor Society which is nationally recognized. And now I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Rossley, who is our Director of Humanities. Hello, good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Julie Rossley, and I'm the Secondary Director of Humanities for the Wantaw School District. I would like to take this opportunity to share with you some of the information about Wantaw High School's humanities programs. In English and reading, the teachers of the department of Wantaw High School seek to enhance the students' reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills, and to further their appreciation and understanding of literature and communication. We encourage students to think critically and creatively by exploring a variety of authors, genres, and mediums and by challenging each learner to read, analyze, and discuss the words of others. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence of English and pass the English Regents exam in 11th grade. In 10th grade, students may enroll in English 10R, English 10H, or AP Seminar, while as juniors, they may enroll in Regents level English or AP English Language and Composition. As seniors, students may enroll in English 12R Foundations, College English, or AP, bless you, AP Literature and Composition. Additionally, students may enroll in semester-long English electives, as well as support classes to strengthen their reading and writing skills. As you can see from this flowchart, students are not tracked in English, meaning that if they choose to, they can move from a Regents level class to an accelerated course and vice versa, year to year. This flexibility holds true in social studies and world languages as well. Please be aware, the rigor of each level increases or decreases substantially based on the level that your child is in. If you have any questions about levels, please feel free to speak with your child's teacher, the guidance counselor, or with me. Social studies. The goal of the Wantaw High School Social Studies Department is to prepare students for college, careers, and civic life with courses that are rigorous and aligned to the New York State Learning Standards for Social Studies. Social Studies is intended to promote civic competence through integrated study of social sciences and humanities. The primary purpose of Social Studies is to help young people develop the ability to make informed and reasoned decisions for the public good as citizens of a culturally diverse democratic society in an independent world. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence in social studies, just like in English, and to take the regions in 10th and 11th grade. 
In 10th grade, students may enroll in either Global History II, AP European History, or AP World History Modern. While as juniors, they may enroll in Regents Level or AP Level US History. As seniors, students take a combination of government and economics courses, which can be standard, college, or AP level. The Social Studies Department takes pride in its philosophy and practice of challenging students intellectually in an academically stimulating environment. And it offers AP elective courses, such as AP Research, for juniors who have successfully completed AP Seminar, and AP Psychology and AP European History for juniors and seniors. Additionally, the department has a long-standing relationship with Syracuse University as well as LIU Post. And we, have, and we offer five college credit bearing courses for our students. These courses are taken by students uh, at Wantaw High School and are taught by our university certified teachers. Students who enroll in these courses and pay the college tuition to the respective university may be granted college credit if they earn a grade of C or better. These college credits are transferable to most colleges and universities. World Languages and ENL. When students enter the high school, they continue their coursework with the target language selected in sixth grade. Annually, every student has the opportunity to enroll in a Regents, Honors, Pre-AP, College, or AP level course, depending on the student's grade level and if the student meets the entry criteria for each of the courses. In each of the world language courses, students engage in learning new vocabulary, conjugating verbs, discovering cult cultural similarities and differences, and understanding diversity. In 10th grade, students take the Checkpoint B exam, which is administered in June. In 11th and 12th grade, students have the option to continue with their world language courses, taking regular or pre-AP level world language courses in 11th grade and college level or AP courses in, as seniors. Taking these courses grants students a variety of academic opportunities, including obtaining college credit for their studies in 12th grade. In some instances, when students take AP courses or college level courses in world languages, they are not required to take a world language when they enter college. As seniors, those students who are enrolled in college level or AP level world language have the opportunity to apply for the Seal of Biliteracy, a prestigious award recognizing students who have studied and attained proficiency in two or more languages by high school graduation. The intent of the New York State Seal of Biliteracy is to encourage the study of languages, identify high school graduates with language and biliteracy skills for employers, provide universities with additional information about applicants seeking admission, prepare students with 21st century skills, recognize the value of foreign and native language instruction in schools, and affirm the value of diversity in a multilingual society. So you know the two languages, the first is English, and the second is the world language that the child chooses to take. Students who are enrolled in ENL classes receive core content area and English language development instruction to enrich communication and comprehension. Should you have any questions about any of these courses or the levels that I've highlighted this evening, please consult the curriculum guide or contact me. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Christopher Kozak, Director of STEM. Good evening. Okay, so, uh, my name is Christopher Kozak. Uh, tonight I'm going to walk you through uh, our terrific course offerings for science, math, and technology. Uh, first up are our science courses. Uh, the vision of the secondary science department is to enhance student performance, critical thinking, real world application, and investigation skills through hands on, minds on approach to learning science. The department is focused on allowing students to choose course options that allow for multiple opportunities to meet their graduation requirements, pursue advanced regents diploma, earn college credit in science, or put together a competitive academic portfolio for a col college application that demonstrates their interest in the STEM fields. All right, the benefit of this course structure that you see in front of you allows students 
to take different pathways in eighth and ninth grade, but have similar choices in 10th grade. Uh, in grade 10, students have the opportunity to take two levels of chemistry, um, a regents or honors level. Additionally, we have a new course named Matter and Energy that serves as a foundational course for students who wish to challenge chemistry in grade 11. In 11th grade, students have a wide selection of AP courses, college accredited courses, and science electives. Sorry, there it is. It's an update. All right, and in terms of AP exams, we offer, we offer several AP placement courses, such as AP Biology, Chemistry, Environmental Science, Physics I, and Physics C. In terms of college course offerings, our students have the opportunities to earn college credit for anatomy and physiology through St. John's University and forensics through Syracuse University. And our science electives, we have science research, introduction to forensics, advanced agriculture, conceptual physics, bioethics, and marine science. And that is it for science. So I have three departments, so I try not to make people fall asleep, and I talk fast. Um, so next, we have mathematics. Uh, the mathematics course, courses offered at Wanta High School are designed to give students a useful and enjoyable experience in mathematics. One of the major goals is to generate critical thinking skills and enable students to apply their knowledge of mathematics to analyze and solve unfamiliar problems in the real world, in the real world today. Um, the wide range of courses allow students to proceed at their own pace and achieve success. In ninth grade, students may take Algebra 2. Oop. I'm sorry, ninth grade students who are currently taking Geometry may take Algebra 2 in 10th grade. They also may uh, concurrently enroll in AP Statistics if they wish. In grade 11, there are several different pathways, including two levels of pre-calculus. We have college pre-calculus accredited through Malloy, which prepares students for AB calculus as seniors. We also offer AP pre-calculus, sorry. We also offer AP pre-calculus. Um, this will prepare, prepare students for BC calculus in grade 12. Um, I'm gonna pause, I see you taking pictures of the screen. So I just wanna clarify one thing. So uh, for those of you that don't know, AB calculus is the first semester of a college level course. BC Calculus is the first two semesters of calculus. Okay. Our current ninth graders enrolled in algebra will take geometry in grade 10. In 11th grade, students may take algebra 2, which leads to many excellent choices in senior year. We offer, once again, we offer advanced placement courses in pre-calculus statistics. Additionally, we offer college accredited courses uh, through Malloy we have uh, statistics, pre-calculus, and algebra and trigonometry. Yeah. For students who want extra support before taking Algebra 2, we offer advanced algebra. And additionally, we offer a business math as a senior elective. Yeah. Next, we'll take a look at our technology program. The vision of the technology department is to provide a multidisciplinary classroom experience that allows students to apply their passion for hands-on experiences in order to collaborate, problem solve, and engage in critical, innovative thinking. As students enter 10th grade, they have several options. We offer woodworks, where students learn woodworking skills, including building and finishing products. We also have basic car care, where students get hands-on experiences. Uh, by maintaining and repairing cars. We have robotics, where students learn about machine automation and computer control systems by building and programming their own VEX robots. And students also have the opportunity to take introduction to coding and AP computer science, which exposes students to the state-of-the-art coding languages, including Java and Python. And our newest course is Power Sports and Equipment Repair, where students assemble, diagnose, and repair mini bikes and power and marine equipment. We also have PLTW, or um, Project Lead the Way, Principles of in Engineering that Leads to Civil Engineering. Right? 
Principle of Engineering exposes students to mechanisms, materials, structures, automation, and motion. And in Civil Engineering, students learn important aspects of building and site design and development. Through successful completion of any PLTW course, including the end of course assessment, students have the opportunity to earn college credit through the Rochester Institute of Te Technology. Okay. And thank you for your time. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our curriculum director for fine and performing arts and business education, Ms. Kelly Jones. Good evening, not to the best part of the day. Um, again, I'm Kelly Jones. I'm the director of fine and performing arts and business education for the district. <clears throat> um, every student um, at the high school is required to have at least one arts credit for graduation. Um, in most cases, um, that is satisfied with the ninth grade course that the student is in, whether it be art or music. Um, but as you can see up here, we have an incredible, robust 10th through 12th grade art program. Um, once a foundations course has been completed, students can then move on to the courses listed below, categorized by art medium. We have fine art, photography, media, and art history. Um, many of the courses listed do have prerequis prerequisites, so please make sure to check the curriculum guide to make sure that you plan out your courses appropriately. Um, and as, as you can see, um, every area uh, of medium uh, does culminate in an AP course. Um, we're very excited this year. Um, our fine art um, in our studio, in our um, ceramics, has really taken off. Um, this year we're offering ceramics one and sculpture one um, and two. Next year we have uh, broken those courses out. Um, there is a foundational um, sculpture and ceramics course. And then the students have the option to go into an advanced sculpture or an advanced ceramics, or they could do both. What we found um, in having this be a new avenue of our art department is that the kids going into the AP 3D really needed to have a little bit more time and, and structure in building um, sculpture and also with the ceramics. So um, it's not required that they take both, but it's highly encouraged because then it's just going to give them one leg up and one, you know, um, an extra semester of work in that medium. So um, next year, like I said, it's, good, it's new for us. We're very excited. Our sculpture program has taken off. Um, we have an incredible lab uh, next door, um, and we're really excited to be able to, to break those courses apart and really let the kids focus in on that medium of sculpture or ceramics in their advanced class. Um, we also have a yearbook production course, which we highly encourage our upperclassmen, our 11th and 12th graders, to get involved with. Um, it meets every other day, and they are the structure of the entire high school yearbook. So if your student um, is really interested in, in creating a document, a book that is just that will be forever here, um, we really encourage our students to take that AP, um, not an AP, but um, the yearbook course, um, and be a part of that uh, assembling of that incredible book uh, that gets into production every year. And finally, we have our comprehensive art class. Um, this can be taken at any time um, after you've taken your foundations course, and it really is a student-driven art class that the students really get to hone in and focus on their own medium that they love, um, whether it be a digital piece or whether it be the sculpture and ceramics or they just want to draw and paint or they want to do a portraiture. This is their opportunity um, to really take a course that they can have guidance from a, a, an art staff, but really start to create their own art. Um, so like I said, that can be taken um, after their foundations course. Um, they can be taken before an AP to help them develop their portfolio and then they can go into an AP course. Or they can take the AP course and then continue into co comprehensive and to create that portfolio to take with them uh, forever. So that's just one of our incredible kind of culminating, really individualized classes that the kids can take in art. And of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. You know, don't feel free. You know, reach out to us. Um, we have probably, I, I can say, an, the best art staff. Um, if you reach out to any of them, they're going to help you or or send you in the right direction. So please feel free to reach out. Music, music. So for music, um, we have our three. Uh, main departments. We have our band, chorus, and orchestra. Um, most ninth graders go into that first level ensemble, concert band, uh, chorale, or symphonic orchestra. Um, 
our band program um, does have that middle intermediary uh, course, symphonic band, where 10th and 12th graders, 10th through 12th graders go into. But of course, we're going to encourage every single student to um, audition and, and push themselves to get into our honors level courses. Those honors levels are wind ensemble, anora la voce, and string ensemble. Those are audition based. Um, students get literature that they would have to study and prepare. They would go in, audition, and then they would be placed into that ensemble. Um, it, it's really a college level uh, course. It is honors weighted because of that rigor, um, and it is incredibly busy. Um, so if you really want to push yourself and have an incredible challenge in the music department, we encourage you to do that um, and, and audition for those groups and be a part of those ensembles. And uh, again, a plug for our music faculty. They're amazing. Also within music, uh, we have our two non-performance-based courses. We have AP Music Theory. Um, if you really want to get the nuts and bolts of what music is, um, how it's created, the, the actual academic portion of what that is looks like and how the notes get put onto the page, this is your course. It takes place in our incredible state-of-the-art music lab uh, with the computers and the keyboards and kids work and they and really learn the structure of music and what the academic side of that music looks like and how to compose. And then of course we have our audio engineering and music production class. Um, this course, again, in the state of the art lab that we have upstairs, students are able to use um, industry standard um, technology. They're in Pro Tools, they're in Logic, and they're actually manipulating music and creating their own. So we encourage students, if they want to do that, um, learn about recording, about different microphones, how to, how to manipulate the sound once a recording takes place. Um, that all happens in that class. Um, we have kids come to concerts, they record the concert, they're able to then go back, shuffle the music, you know, provide it back out to the ensembles for kids to listen to, and it's just really, um, it's a robust class again, and it has that opportunity for the, to, the other side, the non-performing side of music, to, to have your students explore. So. Um, another two great options in the music department. And then this year, we are very excited. Um, this is our second year of choreography and dance. Um, and again, we're having great success. Uh, the students, um, they work all year. They, they um, perform at the Performing Arts Showcase in June. Um, and then now we're going to be offering an advanced choreography and dance for those students who want to continue on and continue those skill sets and learn um, from all different choreographers, um, all different styles of dance, and really um, create their own performance and then be able to perform it um, here for an audience. So again, we're very excited to be able to offer that second level advanced choreography and dance next year. Okay, uh, business. So this is our um, relatively new um, designed business department. Uh, we have some courses there that uh, we want to make sure that we are clear about you know, our, the pathways and making sure that everyone understands what they can do within our business department. We have our two ninth grade courses, um, but they're not just ninth grade. Uh, they can be taken by anyone, ninth through twelfth grade, and that is the foundations of business and business communications. And then from there, we have three strands. We have business administration, finance, and marketing. And you'll see up at the top, you have our foundations courses, the foundations of business and business communications. And then you have our three strands, business administration, finance, and marketing. So the 10th through 12th grade students um, can absolutely take the, the foundations courses at any time. But we encourage students to then go down one of the columns we also encourage them to mix and match because they're really developing their own business portfolio um, and really getting into an understanding of the different avenues of business that they can then take on if they were to go on to college and take business um, at the secondary, um, at the post-secondary level. Um, we do have several college level courses. So the, the two intermediate courses are 10th through 12th grade and then our college level is for 11th and 12th graders only. And then, of course, we have our incredible virtual enterprise program. Um, students compete on the international um, stage as far as put, putting a business together. Um, they, they take the class, they um, elect a CEO, and they have a CFO, and then they have someone who does their marketing. And it, it really takes them through the complete and total process of putting a small business together. And then they go to workshops. They go to uh, present their, their um, 
almost like Shark Tank type of situation where they go in and they, they, they pitch their, their um, new business to other schools. Uh, we have an event coming up here that we're going to have an auditorium or, or, or a gym full of um, business students from across Long Island, you know, showing off their new vi business adventures. So um, we encourage everyone to take that incredible virtual enterprise course, which again is college level. And then we have our work experience. Um, uh, our career and financial manage management course is, is paired with that, and um, our coordinator helps students locate a placement if they want to work in an accounting office or they want to understand the business of running the dry cleaner. We can, we can help students get into that kind of placement and then um, work with them to make sure they have the tools to be successful in that true business setting um, and then have the support of our staff here to make sure that they're, they're good to go um, in that business location. So yeah, our business department, please, if you have any questions about any of these, please feel free to reach out to me or any of the teachers. Um, they're all amazing resources, and um, we're just looking forward to another great year. And I'm going to invite Ms. Keene. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Keen. I'm the Director of Physical Education, Health, Athletics, and Driver's Education. In terms of physical education, every student in grades 9 through 12 must take and pass phys ed each semester to graduate. The structure and foundation of our physical education course is to promote a healthy lifestyle uh, and encourage positive behaviors. We offer numerous options uh, within our course for student choice and engagement, as well as fostering lifelong fitness and wellness. Uh, health education is also a required course for all students. For the first time uh, this upcoming year, health is going to be offered to students in grades 10 through 12. Um, and can be taken either uh, every day in a semester or every other day for a full year. Um, our health course covers the makeup of the human body and its functions while enforcing the key concepts of properly maintaining and promoting a healthy lifestyle in a continually changing environment. There's a premise of developing positive behaviors with an emphasis on eliminating behaviors that negatively affect a healthy lifestyle and place an individual or individuals at risk. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I would now like to invite up Dr. Maura Lachance, our special education supervisor. Good evening. Um, my name is Dr. Maura Lachance. I'm the supervisor of special education here. And I'd like to say I'm extremely proud of the special education program that we have here. Um, all decisions regarding special education are made at a CSE meeting. And that's where we develop an IEP or an individualized education plan, which really specializes and individualizes instruction based on your child's strengths and needs. Um, again, all decisions are made at CSE meetings. So every year you get an annual review meeting that happens in the spring. And by spring, we really start in February. So February to May is when we have these meetings just to give ourselves ample time for both administration and teachers to plan for the following year. Um, we have a whole variety of programs and services offered here. Um, we have services such as speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, counseling, parent training um, that would be on a student's IEP. However, we also sometimes offer non-mandated services. So a student might meet with a psychologist for counseling. A student doesn't have an IEP, but they're going through a tough time, and our psychologists provide that service as well. So even if your child doesn't have an IEP and, and they need a little extra support, that's also you know here as well. Um, we also offer a resource room where a student has one period a day that's in their schedule um, that they meet with a special education teacher and work on skills that are indicated on their IEP. Um, that's one of our most least restrictive options or programs offered. Then we also have um, integrated co-teaching. And integrated co-teaching is when we have two teachers teaching together, um, both a gen ed teacher and a special ed teacher who co-teach together. Um, sometimes you'll see them teaching team teaching at the front of the room. Sometimes they're doing small group work. Um, and there's students in that class both that have an IEP and students that don't have an IEP. Um, so your student might have not have an IEP but have had um, 
really the luxury of being in those classes. There's really a plethora of research out there that supports the benefits of ICT for both kids with and without IEPs. So um, we have a really nice ICT program here. Um, we also have small special classes. If students need a little bit more support, um, these classes are capped, no more than 15 students in a class. There's a teacher and an assistant in that class. The teacher is a special ed teacher who provides real individualized instruction to those students. Um, then we also offer supplementary aids, program modifications, and accommodations. This is really to enhance students' success and increase their ability to access and participate in the curriculum. Um, modifications alter what is taught, accommodations alter how it's taught. So students with maybe poor visual acuity, they might have enlarged handouts. So it's just an accommodation like that just to make sure they can access the same content as everyone else. Um, students who have difficulty sustaining attention, they might have um, breaks built into their both classwork or testing as well. Um, and that leads me to test accommodations where we just wanna make sure that we're assessing students on their attainment of contact, content knowledge or skill set. So we just wanna make sure they're not limited due to the effects of their disability. So they might have test accommodations on their IEP. Um, these all are, you know, go through extensive conversations at CSE to determine what test accommodations are needed for a student. Um, and each year they're reevaluated to make sure those same test accommodations are needed for the following year. We also have students here with 504 plans, and 504 plans can have test accommodations as well as program modifications as well. Um, but that's really it. If you ever have any questions, I'm available at any time. Um, you could email, call me, and you could also reach out to the building psychologists. Um, Dr. Caitlin Wong and Ms. Lemire are extremely happy to answer any questions, and they are very knowledgeable about all aspects of special ed. All right, so now I'd like to um, introduce Mr. Frank Musio. Good evening, everyone. I'm Frank Musio. I'm the Director of Guidance and Family Consumer Sciences. And I just want to start off with uh, uh, the, the best way to describe Family Consumer Sciences is that is, is experiential learning that students learn by, by doing. It's a very hands-on type of curriculum. Uh, we teach life skills that uh, help students grow into adulthood. The goals uh, being that students can develop a budget. They can um, develop nutritious meals. They can understand their own nutritional needs and meet those needs. Uh, and they do it in a fun way. I just want to share a couple of my, my favorite projects that they've done in Family Consumer Science this year. Uh, in our Master Chef class, uh, they make a chicken stir fry, which uh, is one of my favorites because it's a one skillet meal. Kids make it in college. So they could throw out the ramen noodles and they could do something like a chicken stir fry. Uh, another really good one um, in our uh, International Gourmet Foods class is uh, Mrs. Carr, our teacher, plays some Italian music and the kids will make homemade pasta with uh, Italian sauce and it's, it's, it's just great. And the whole hallway smells like an Italian restaurant. It's fantastic. Uh, we have another strand of family consumer sciences in child development. In child development, as the name would suggest, uh, students learn developmental theory. So students take these courses when they're interested in pediatrics, when they're interested in education, in teaching, working with children. And so uh, students take child development, they take adolescent development as ninth graders first, and we have a college level developmental psych class as well uh, through LIU Post. Uh, our play group is a part of each of those three classes. And those of you who are unfamiliar with play group, it's very popular here in Wanta. Uh, children, preschool children from the community come in and they are part of our classes in uh, child development for, uh, you know, with our, they interact with our high school students. And so our high school students having just learned of things like the acquisition of motor skills and they learn about separation anxiety and now they have these little human beings in part of this lab and it's fantastic and parents love it. Uh, Dr. Gazone being one of those parents uh, has his child 
And my son, when he was in preschool, was part of this program as well. So it's really a popular, popular program. Um, the guidance department, of which I spend much of my time. Uh, the goal of the guidance and counseling department is to help students navigate high school and transition on to post high school plans. Um, as you can see, we have an extensive program of evening events and events throughout the school day. But much of our time is really spent seeing students. It's often difficult for me to get the attention of one of our counselors because they're either on the phone with parents or they have a student in their office. We do a lot of college and career counseling throughout the day. We do academic counseling, help students to uh, enhance or maximize their GPAs. We talk uh, to them a lot about just personal counseling. Our offices are never empty. And I'm glad that, they, uh, that students in this building feel very comfortable just coming down to the guidance office if they're having a good day or a bad day. And sometimes students just need to uh, talk it out a little bit and go back to class. And so that's really uh, our, our primary function and we enjoy it very much. We pride ourselves in the guidance department on our communication. Like I said, we're on the phone a lot. Parents call us or we call them. We're, we're available by email, but we have uh, a parent meeting schedule for every grade level. We did our freshman parent meetings in November. We'll have sophomore parent meetings in May. We'll have junior conferences in March, and we've seen our seniors and their parents in September. So uh, please make note of that, take part. Look for my parent square messages about uh, those those parent conferences. Any sophomores in the room? Okay, we have our sophomore college night coming up on March 26th. We split students and parents up by counselor, small group settings. We, we get them started with, with post high school planning and with college planning. Any juniors in the room? Possibly good. Uh, we start our four part night program here in the auditorium this month on January 24th at 7 p.m. And we go for four nights, an hour each night, uh, and we uncover every stone <laughs> related to uh, college admissions, beginning with standardized tests and SATs, ACTs, and our finale is financial aid. Uh, so that is, that is our guidance department. And, and obviously, any questions, please, please reach out email or phone. Uh, vocational ed, I'll touch upon this. Uh, this month I'll be doing interviews for 10th graders who are interested in vocational programs and they can range from carpentry, uh, trade electricity, cosmetology, culinary arts. Uh, students go to these vocational centers for half the day and they spend half the day here with us in Wantsaw High School. The programs are selective. And so uh, we do have an application process. Those applications must be completed by February 1st for interested students. You've heard a lot of information tonight, and it's uh, unlikely that you've memorized everything that's been said so far. But you are in luck because Mr. Pappas, our assistant principal, is going to talk to you about how to access that information through our curriculum guide. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. It's good to see everybody. Uh, so just like Mr. Musio said, there's been a lot of information thrown at you tonight uh, with all the various programs from all the departments. Good news is, is that all of this information is accessible online on our new website that you can see. Um, if you go to the high school website, it is a brand new website, so that'll be, you know, that'll be um, new to see as well. Um, but if you go and click um, About, over there on the picture on the right, about, and then about Wanto High School, and then click on course offerings. It'll bring you to a page to be able to select the, um, the most recent curriculum guide, which is the 20, for the 24-25 school year, which is the next school year. Um, the great thing about this curriculum guide is that it is interactive, so you'll see various links 
um, instead of scrolling through uh, a 100-page document, per se, um, you could, you know, it, it, it is hyperlinked. So if you just want to go see something in the social studies department, you can click on the social studies link, and it will bring you right there. So everything is super interactive and user-friendly. Um, so if you're confused about all the information that was thrown at your way this evening, uh, please um, go online and, and, and check it out, uh, because that could clarify and answer some questions for you. Uh, in terms of what I do in this whole process, I know the directors and supervisors spoke about their programs. Um, I work very closely with all the directors and the supervisors and with the counselors because right now we are kind of in the scheduling season for the 24-25 school year. Um, last month, uh, teachers were able to make recommendations for your children for next school year. And that window did close today. So teachers did, you know, in fact, make those recommendations. Uh, later this week, you'll get information from me on how you can access and take a look at what those recommendations were on the parent portal. So um, you'll have access to that probably by the end of the week. I'll open that on, in the parent portal to see what those recommendations were. Now, recommendations are different than requests because you know, just because a, your child was recommended for a particular course doesn't necessarily mean that that's what they want to take for next year. And that's really where they're going to be meeting with the counselors in the month of January and the very, very beginning of February. And they're going to narrow down that list of all possible recommendations and kind of transform them into course requests. And you know that takes some time. And, and throughout the month of January, as, you, as your child meets with their counselor, that portal is open. So you will see changes. If you were to click on the portal, let's say, at the end of the week to see all the, all the courses that your child was recommended for, and then take a look you know, in, in about three weeks after your child has met with their counselor, you'll see that it looks very different. Um, and that, and we do encourage you. We're all about transparency here to be able to take a look at what those courses look like before they finally kind of transform into course requests. Um, the the next step in the process is once they're changed, you know, once they're transformed into course requests, um, we will be sending out another notification in February, right before about a week before February break. That letter really uh, it'll, you know, tells you all the courses that your child did in fact request for 24-25 school year. Um, at that point, you'll have about a week, which is pretty much the week before February break, to kind of make any last minute changes before I go into um, building mode. And what, that, what I mean by that is that I take all the course requests that all the kids really you know, request for next year and I, you know, I go into uh, building the master schedule for next year. Um, at that point, we are kind of in a frozen zone or a frozen period per se. So changes can or requests or changes to a child's schedule for next year um, can't really be made between March 1st and about June, at some point in June, because as I build, I can't, it's very difficult to kind of build a schedule with all these possible changes going on. Um, if, in fact, there is a change of heart, and that is, that happens a lot, right? Maybe sometime in April, you, know, you might, a kid might change their mind and say, I don't want to take this course, I, I want to uh, take the other course instead. Um, those will be, um, you know, there's no guarantee that you'll get those courses, um, but we'll try our best, right? Because the sections will be built at that point, um, and, and, you know, there might be some movement potentially in June for that, um, for that request change, but it, there really is no guarantee. So that's why we do encourage kids uh, and families, right, uh, to take a look at the portal, to really be a part of the process so that as you have conversations with your kids about what they want to take next year, it really does help clarify for you, for them, and for our, our counseling staff as to what that looks like so that um, you know, those changes are at minimum. Um, and then um, that's it for me. Um, in June, when, when the, you get a final notification, well, that letter really does tell you what the courses, all the exact courses that your child was scheduled for. And at that point, there will be about a week to make a final, final change. But then again, no guarantee at that point that you, you know, will be uh, placed into the other course, right? So it is nice and it is important to try to get it 
uh, as close to right as early as possible so that it's easier to, to build a schedule that is holistic for you know, a population of 850 students and, and also ensuring that all kids get what they, what, what they request. So that's, uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna, we're going to turn it over to Dr. Gazon and for a quick Q&A. Thank you again for joining us tonight, and uh, Happy New Year. Yeah, and just real quick before uh, we close off for some, uh, we have a couple minutes for question. Uh, question, just I always like to give a nice shout out to our uh, parent organizations, uh, the 612 Sports Booster, SEPTA, and the newly formed, I think, I hope I got it right, uh, the Wanto Boot, uh, Performing Arts Booster um, organization as well, who, who kind of joined forces to support our performing arts program. So uh, if you get a chance, you know, if your kids are involved, please join their programs, uh, their, their organizations. They do great work for our, our students in supporting their, um, uh, you know, the things that they want to do in their areas of interest. So, questions? Yes? Yeah, so when the message goes out, uh, it will say uh, click here, click there, click there. Um, and uh, you can probably even go to the portal now and see the letter from last year. That it's going to be the same uh, steps, but it will tell you exactly where to, where to click. Yep. Other questions? Yes? Yeah, so uh, AP is a, it, it's run by the College Board. Uh, that means that the College Board has its own prescribed programming. Um, it is, in, in theory, it's, you know, any student that takes an AP course anywhere in the country, right, they could kind of almost like pick up and, and leave. Uh, they could take it, I'm sorry, AP College Board, right? Well, I was, I'm sorry, I didn't clarify. The world, okay, could uh, uh, pick up and leave one school and move to a course across the country or a different country and almost pick up where they left off because it, it's following that prescribed program. Uh, a college course is a little different in the sense that um, every school that might have college courses, they, they link and connect with different colleges and they follow those colleges' um, prescribed programming. Um, so it's just, it's, uh, usually the AP is a little bit more rigorous because they have to also take an AP exam. Right, they take, when they take the AP exam, uh, they get a score, and um, in, at the colleges, usually some colleges will take scores of three, four, or five uh, for college credit. Not all of them will. Uh, some will, some, some won't. That's really, you have to look at that when you apply. Uh, on the, at the college level, if you take a college level course, there's no really uh, standardized assessment. There will be an assessment, uh, you'll get a grade, and typically what will happen is if you meet the, the college uh, requirement for earning college credit, You'll get actually a transcript from the college as long as you pay ahead of time. You can bring that uh, to colleges that you uh, go to, but again, there's no guarantee that those those credits will transfer. Also, uh, look, I, I think part of it also is um, what we offer as a building um, in terms of when you say accepting or evaluating transcripts, right? In, in terms of accepting, I, I feel like colleges do lean a little bit more towards. AP, but it, it's really, it's different. I, I can't, like, it, you really have to look at the college that you're applying to and see what they're, they're willing to take. Um, different levels, different courses, different acceptance levels. It also depends, because if you look at your courses, which you already, generally, when you're taking a college level course, it's project based. So it's working a Yeah, it depends on what school your, your, your child's really looking to uh, apply for. Yeah, okay. Um, other questions? No? All right, well, one thing I'm really proud of that I just want to share, um, and I know it might seem like a little silly thing, but I like to talk about it all the time, uh, and this really has to do with, uh, when you look at a lot of these charts, uh, what you'll see is, and, and you know, Ms. Rossi brought this up, but uh, it's important. We're, we're never possible. We don't put arrows on our charts, right? Uh, we, you know, except in certain situations, right? Um, 
you know, we really believe that students develop in, in, at different rates, different levels, uh, different times, and we really believe in the fact that kids can challenge honors and, and go back and forth uh, as much as they can. Uh, we try our best not to track students because of that. And I know it might not seem like anything, but it's a big deal. Like, we have conversations, like, we don't want arrows on these things. Like, we don't want, we don't want people to feel like you, they're going to start uh, in ninth grade and, and take an honors level English or honors level social studies, or they're not, and they have to stay on those tracks. Right? Uh, that's not something we believe in. Uh, we believe that every student grows and develops at different levels. And when they're ready to take that challenge, they can, we're going to be able to give them that challenge. Uh, if they feel like they bit too much off and they need to maybe take a step back from a full AP schedule, that's OK. We're going to take care of you there, too. Uh, that's something we really are, are anchored and, and believe in here at Wanta High School. And I know it seems small, but those hours are not on our, our uh, flow charts uh, as much as possible for that reason. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I guess your, your question is, uh, sometimes when students hand in, don't hand in grades or uh, something's maybe not fully graded, a partial grade goes in. Um, and I, I think there's two sides to, to that uh, conversation, right? I, I think parents also like to be in the know, right? So if, you don't, if they don't see that zero in there sometimes, parents don't know that something's owed or, or something needs to be submitted. Or, uh, and, and, and that kind of takes away the ability of a parent to really kind of support their, chi their child and, and monitor that. Uh, what I would say is uh, one of the things that we want to work towards as a school is supporting students through anxiety and things like that. Uh, so if, if we have someone, a child who's has, who has difficulty seeing things like this, right, come talk to us. You know, let, we'll, work, we'll work through some uh, coping mechanism strategies to help them uh, work through that pro process. <laughs> Parent anxiety. We can help too. Yeah. Yeah, we could we could have uh, some additional conversations. Uh, if you want to contact me uh, tomorrow, uh, we could have some additional conversations uh, a little bit more specifically um, about it. Okay, all right. So uh, at this point, I'm going to conclude our 10 through 12 presentation. Uh, thank you for everybody for attending. Thank you for our 10 through 12 families that were uh, with us online. Uh, enjoy the rest of your night. And again, this uh, entire program is being live streamed and recorded, and it will be on the website uh, to view again, as uh, so you so choose, in a day or so. A day or so. Thank you. So uh, 
Welcome, everybody. Um, the time is uh, 7.30, and we're going to be starting our, our, our third uh, session of the night. And this is uh, or give you the most important one, right? Eight into nine. Um, so uh, for uh, everyone who's here right now and for people who are home, I know there's a good number of people uh, home that are uh, live streaming in. Uh, welcome to our eight into nine night. Uh, just a little bit of history. Uh, a couple of years ago, we used to actually hold a, a grand night, and it was, it was 9 to 12. And some of the feedback that we received was like, you know, we need our own night for 8 into 9. I was like, I agree. We, like, we agree. You guys do need your own uh, little section, right, where we can really kind of speak to uh, uh, the transitioning students coming into the high school for the first time. Um, so for everybody, just to know, at the end of the conclusion of tonight, uh, this night, this session is being recorded as well. So uh, when you, if you were to visit the the Wantoa Schools YouTube channel, um, in a day or so, this whole program will be uh, available for everyone to view uh, in a day or so also. So don't feel like you need to take lots of notes or, or take pictures because the whole program will be available to, to see. Um, and if you haven't guessed, because I don't know if I said it yet, but I am Paul Gazone. I am the principal of Wantoa High School. I am uh, in my fourth year here, and it is a tremendous place to be. Uh, I, I could not be more thrilled that I landed here. Um, the, the kids are fantastic. The faculty are just amazing. Uh, they care deeply about kids. Uh, they're, you know, they, they're, they're visionaries. They're, 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 looking, they're always look, looking how they could do better. It's just such a great place. And just from a community perspective, uh, the community is just, just amazing. Uh, and I live in Seaford. I'm just around the corner. So uh, I run into some parents every now and then uh, you know, at the restaurants and whatever. I have two young children. Uh, my son is uh, six. He's in first grade at the Harbor School. Um, and he, uh, he's always around. Uh, my daughter is three and a half. She'll be four in February. Um, she's going to be in one of the pre-Ks in Wontoa, whichever one my wife decides. Um, but uh, my children are always a part of uh, the high school. You'll see them around in lots of different events. And uh, I, I just like to share that. Um, I think it's important that you know, everyone know who, who, you know who I really am as a person and as a family member. Um, now, uh, up here is just a list of uh, supportive administrative personnel. Um, and, and I have to say I am just thrilled and uh, fortunate to work with, with all these people. Uh, we, we meet daily, we, we talk daily, and uh, all of our discussions and, and decision-making processes, you know, they, they always revolve around what's best for children. You know, what, what, what is the best avenue uh, to take? What's the best road to take to uh, give our students the best experience possible? Um, and sometimes, you know, we have different perspectives and we, we disagree, right? And, and, and that's okay. Uh, because we, if we're all agreeing, that means like we're not potentially growing and getting better and, and uh, pushing our, our building to give the experiences that, to our children and our, uh, our students that they need to, to better themselves. And it's just, it's, it's, it's just a, a great team to be part of. Uh, they're very communicative. So if you have any questions after tonight also, you know, feel free to reach out to any of our directors or building administration, and uh, they will gladly uh, you know, write you an email back or pick up a phone uh, to, to give you a, a call to discuss further. Um, typically, you know, I always like to show these slides real quick. Um, I usually just highlight just three things that I think are really important. Uh, for me, uh, on the bottom left-hand corner, 92.2% uh, of our students, the students in the class of 2023 were enrolled in at least one college level or advanced placement course in their time uh, at Wanta High School, right? That's a big number, right? Nine out of 10 kids take at least one college level or AP level course while they're here. Um, and why I like to show that is, is, is you know, we have a breadth of classes and opportunities for students to challenge themselves at a very rigorous level beyond a, a regions level or um, a regions level course. Uh, curricula. Uh, we have college level courses in facts, in, in art, uh, in art, in business, and you name it. Uh, and, and over time, and you might not feel as a parent or a child might not feel right now going to ninth grade that they're even thinking about, you know, taking a college or AP level course at any point. I'm here to tell you that, look, they can, right? And if it's just one course, uh, it's going to be really important at some point in their career uh, that they expose themselves to a, a course of a higher rigor than what we offer on, let's say, a regions or honors level course uh, level, and uh, just to have that experience. And our kids are doing it, and they're, they're having great success. And over time, you'll have these conversations with your, the teachers and the counselors and the directors, and we'll find the right spot for them. Uh, but I just think that's such a great number because uh, it really shows what we, that we have something for everybody here at Wontaw High School. I also like to show the, the box. 
So in the box, it shows that 95% uh, of students return for a second year of college, with the national average being 75%. 78% um, of our students complete a degree within six years, um, and the national average is 62. And I update these numbers every year, right? So these are, these are fresh off of, our, um, of the, the last data that, that came out. And you know, at face value, it's like, okay, 20% difference, 16%. Uh, but when you really look at the percent difference, right? Uh, they both correlate to about 25, 26%. So kids who come to Wanta High School, you know, they're 25% more likely, 26% more likely to uh, return for the second year of college. Uh, they're 25 to 26% more likely to uh, complete a degree in uh, four to six years, right? Like, I think those are the numbers that I think are really important to talk about. I think a lot of schools, what they, they like to tout is, okay, we have a graduating class, and they go into the Ivy League schools, and they're doing this and doing that, and that's great, and we have kids that do that too. But the question is, what do they do when they actually get there, right? Are they, are they coming back for a second year? Are they, are, they getting their, are they getting their degrees? Are they not getting the degrees? Because if they go into these places, and they're not coming back, they're not getting the degrees, then who cares, right? That's the truth. So uh, the product, the, the, what we put forward in the, in the, the curriculum and the support and the skills that we develop as a building, yield to excellent results, and that's why I like to show that. Um, I just think it's really important. Now, uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Woman. He is one of our assistant principals here at the high school. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be here tonight, and everybody at home, welcome. Uh, I'm Chris Widman. I'm the assistant principal here at the high school. And I'm going to go through a few things here. Um, this slide here shows some of our new courses that we're offering right now, the new additions um, to our course catalog. Uh, they've been available to our students in uh, September of 2024. Um, many of these courses, though, <coughs> excuse me, are advanced, um, so ninth graders are not eligible for them. Uh, but we want to make sure that students see what we offer and that uh, we're constantly updating our programs to based on the needs of our students. And that over the years, there'll be plenty of um, revisions to ensure that students are provided with opportunities to have the best experience possible here at Wanto High School. And some of these courses will be discussed a little bit later on by the curriculum uh, directors. Uh, as far as extracurricular goes, I know this slide may seem a little overwhelming. Um, but as you can see, uh, we offer a wide variety of uh, interscholastic athletic teams uh, for both boys and girls. And we have well over 40 clubs here at Wanto High School, so there's something for everybody to get involved in. Uh, and we encourage that. Um, when students come in for their uh, freshman orientation in August, uh, we try to encourage students to meet up with the groups because we usually have a little uh, fair for the clubs that are available, and we want students to be involved. We feel it's a big part of um, the high school experience is for students to not only be either involved in sports uh, or extracurricular activities, um, clubs, uh, as well as some of our co-curricular activities like the theater and the musical and our, and our school magazine and newspaper. Uh, we want our students to be able to take advantage of all the things that we offer here. So as you can look at that list there, you'll see there's, uh, there's things for just about any child right there um, uh, to fulfill their interests. Um, and so, um, you know, that's also available in our uh, curriculum guide and online, so you'll always be able to see all the things that we offer. And if the child is involved in a club, uh, we do have on our website a, um, a, a Google form that shows you when the clubs meet, who the advisor is, and uh, when the, when where the meetings are held. So we try to get that information out there for everyone to know, uh, so that students can, you know, try out any of the clubs they want or any of the sports that they want here. Okay, and honor societies. One of the things that we are really really proud of here, Wantor, is that we recognize those students who achieve at the highest level through our many different honor societies that recognize the overall high academic achievement and leadership, as well as department-specific honor societies, as you can see listed there on the right, uh, for students who excel in specific academic areas. Uh, it's important for your child to know that whether it be they, when they come into school, the clock starts ticking right away as soon as they come into high school, uh, so they want to work on their academics, 
uh, so they can you know, build a nice portfolio and make their transcript look really good when they get, uh, as, they trans, you know, as they go through their years here at Wanto High School. Um, so uh, there's a variety of different things for children to get involved in, and we encourage them to do all that. And we also want to be able to recognize students who achieve at the highest level too. So that ends it for me. I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Ms. Julie Rossley, our Director of Humanities. Hello, and good evening. I'm Julie Rossley, and I'm the Director of Humanities for the Wantaw School District. I'd like to take this opportunity to share with you some information about Wantaw High School's humanities programs. The teachers of Wantaw's English and Reading Departments at Wantaw High School seek to enhance students' reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills, and to further their appreciation and understanding of literature and communication. We encourage students to think cri critically and creatively by exploring a variety of authors, genres, and mediums, and by challenging each learner to read, analyze, and discuss the words of others. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence in English and to pass the English Regents exam in 11th grade. As freshmen, students may take either English 9R or 9 Honors. Each of these courses builds off of the reading and writing skills that are taught in 8th grade. Additionally, students may enroll in semester-long English electives as well as support classes to strengthen their reading fluency, comprehension, and writing skills. As you can see from this flowchart, students are not tracked in English, so they may choose to move from, from a Regents level course to an Honors level course, or vice versa, from year to year. This flexibility holds true in social studies and in world languages as well. Please be aware that the rigor of each level increases or decreases substantially based on the level your child is in. If you have any questions about the levels, please feel free to speak with your child's teacher guidance counselor, or me. Social studies. The goal of Wantaw High School's social studies department is to prepare students for college, careers, and civic life with courses that are rigorous and aligned to the New York State learning standards for social studies. Social studies is intended to promote civic competence through the integrated study of social sciences and humanities. The primary purpose of social studies is to help young people develop the ability to make informed and reasoned decisions for the public good as citizens of a culturally diverse democratic society in an independent world. To meet the New York State graduation requirements, all students are required to enroll in a four-year sequence of social studies. That sequence is Global History I, or pre-AP World History and Geography in ninth grade. Global History II, AP World History Modern, or AP European History in 10th grade, U.S. History in 11th grade, and Government and Economics in 12th grade. There are Social Studies Regents exams in 10th and 11th grades. These exams correlate with the materials taught during those curricular years. Wantaw High School takes great pride in its philosophy and practice of challenging students intellectually in an academic, stimulating environment. With that in mind, the Social Studies Department offers a four-year sequence of AP courses for students who wish to challenge themselves through their high school careers. World Languages and ENL. When students enter high school, they continue their coursework with a target language selected in sixth grade. Throughout the four years of high school world language study, each student has the opportunity to enroll in Regents, Honors, College, or AP level courses, depending on the student's grade level and if the student meets the entry criteria for each of these courses. In each of the world language courses, students engage in learning new vocabulary, conjugating verbs, discovering cultural similarities and differences, and understanding diversity. As ninth and 10th graders, students prepare for the Checkpoint B exam, which is administered in June of a student's sophomore year. Students enrolled in ENL classes receive core content area and English language development instruction to enrich communication and comprehension. Should you have any questions about any of the courses or opportunities I have highlighted this evening, please con consult the curriculum guide or contact me. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Christopher Kozak, Director of STEM.
Thank you. Good evening. Um, tonight I'm going to walk you through our terrific offerings in science, mathematics, and technology. I'm going to try not to cough into the microphone too, which has been a challenge. Um, let's start even. Okay, as you may know, our eighth graders can take two regents courses, Earth Science or Living Environment. Um, if your student is enrolled in Living Environment currently, uh, they'll take Earth Science in ninth grade. If they're currently enrolled in Earth Science as eighth graders, they can take either Living Environment or challenge a course called LEAPS in ninth grade. LEAPS is an acronym for Living Environment combined with AP Environmental Science. Okay. Le LEAPS is a combined curriculum outlined by the New York State and College Board where students earn both Regents and AP credits upon completing the course. Um, the benefit of this course structure allows students to take different pathways in 8th and ninth grade but have similar choices in grade 10. In, in 10th grade, students will have two different levels of chemistry, uh, Regents level and honors, and we also offer a course called Matter and Energy, which serves as a foundational course for students uh, who wish to challenge chemistry in 11th grade. Okay. All right, and in addition to this, this was, um, we presented this early in November, but we began the Wanta High School Science Research Academy this year. Um, it's a fantastic program. It's a select four-year program. It provides students with essential research skills through collaborative research projects, papers, oral presentations, and God willing, in a new research lab in September, if all our construction plans work out, which is, which is gonna be really exciting. Um, students will secure summer internships, enter local, regional, and national competitions. And later on this month, uh, there will be an additional eighth grade student presentation uh, towards the end of January. Okay. And next is mathematics. Um, our, our current grade eight math students will move to algebra one in ninth grade and geometry in 10th grade. Our current grade eight algebra one students will move to geometry in ninth grade in Algebra 2 and 10th grade. Um, it is important to note the, the letters um, R and H on the schedule, which represent Regents and Honors Level courses. Um, as they develop, some students gain strengths and interests in mathematics. In the high school, we provide the ability for students to challenge themselves in Honors math courses, even if they did not initially begin Honors in middle school. Okay. And additionally, our 10th graders, so this is 8th moving to 9th grade, just to, to make you aware, 10th uh, graders have the opportunity to co-seat um, AP statistics as well as Algebra 2. Okay. And Dr. Gazone, this is all available, right? This, okay, so I, I know it's a lot of information, so um, it, it seems a little bit overwhelming, but this, this presentation and these notes are, are available. Okay. In the catalog as well. Thank you. All right. Almost made it. All right. And next is technology. Right. The next year, ninth graders have the opportunity to take two distinct introductory courses. Introductory courses. Um, each course is, is semester-based, which means it's half a year, half a school year. Uh, the first is introduction to coding, where students are exposed to widely used coding languages. Uh, the second course is robotics, which introduces students to machine automation and computer control systems using VEX robotics platform. Um, we also have engineering, drawing, drafting, and design for production, which I'll speak about on the next slide. As students enter 10th grade, they have several other options. We offer woodworks, where students learn woodworking skills through building and finishing products. Um, we have basic car care, where students get the hands-on experience of maintaining and repairing cars. We have um, a new course this year called Power Sports and uh, Small Engine Repair, where students assemble, diagnose, and repair mini bikes, power, and uh, marine equipment. That's really exciting. Um, and beyond ninth, uh, beyond ninth grade students, if they don't, can't fit in their schedule, they still have the option to take introduction to coding or robotics um, as 10th, 11th, or 12th graders. And we also have AP Computer Science, which exposes students to state-of-the-art coding languages such as Java and Python. And coming back to our 
our engineering uh, drawing and drafting for design. That's part of our PLTW pathway, all right, focusing this foundation, of course, um, merges project lead the way introduction to engineering with the design and drawing for production course. Um, it, this is an excellent opportunity for students that allows them to express their artistic creativity while learning design basics, product improvement, modeling, and computer-aided design. Upon successful completion of the course, students may w earn one foundational art credit. And additionally, upon successful completion of a PLTW, PLTW assessment, as well as, as course um, and course uh, assessments, students can earn credit from the Rochester Institute of Technology. Sorry. Almost made it. All right, and that's it. And um, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Kelly Jones. Thank you. So good evening. Um, I'm Kelly Jones, the Director of Fine and Performing Arts and Business Education for the district. Um, now to the best part of every, everyone's day, art class and music and business. Um, but we start with our art courses. Um, every high school student is required to have at least one arts credit for graduation. Um, as a ninth grader, you're able to choose from uh, three of our foundational art courses, which is studio and art, drawing, drafting, and design, which is our Project Lead the Way course that Mr. Kozak just talked about, and our studio and media, which is um, a computer-based art, art class. Um, as well, we offer two ninth grade um, electives. Um, the, in, they're half year courses, so our foundational courses are a full year, every single day, a full credit uh, based course. But we do offer two half year electives uh, for ninth graders, and that is screen printing, which is great fun. The students learn how to actually um, produce uh, screens and uh, be able to print on. Um, everything from paper to cloth to everything. Um, and then we also offer sculpture and ceramics, which um, our, our 3D uh, department has really uh, taken off in the last few years. Um, right now, I think we have over 150 kids enrolled in our 3D program. Um, they take um, their intro to sculpture and ceramics, and then we offer, um, after that, they can go on and they can take um, advanced ceramics or advanced sculpture. Um, as, as you can see, as soon as the students complete their foundations course, um, they can go down any one of our um, categories uh, in mediums, uh, fine art, photography, media art, and art history. Um, once they do fulfill that requirement of foundational, they can go on to any area underneath um, and, and really they can mix and match or they can stay true to their digital art if they truly want to do all computer graphics. Um, but they. Um, are able to go in any of those um, green boxes. Um, and you can see that each area also culminates in an AP course. So everything is foundational based and then you build on that into, um, from, uh, into a, a more of elective uh, course, whether it be drawing and painting, you would go on to then the AP and drawing, um, or you would take graphics one and two and then go on to the AP and graphics. But each area does culminate in that AP course as they move up through um, in 11th grade. Our comprehensive art course is also another course they can take after they've taken their foundational course. And it's really an individualized course that the students are able to really hone in on their own personal medium of choice. So the students with guidance from uh, an, an art staff are able to really, um, if they absolutely love um, portraiture, they can focus on that and they can pr develop a portfolio of, of just that. Or they can dabble in um, more graphic and they can really take their art to their, in their own direction under the guidance of, of course, an art, art, art teacher, but they're able to really develop and create their own portfolio. So that comprehensive course is really unique um, to Wanta, and we're really um, very, very happy with that. So, um, but again, our foundational courses for ninth grade, you'll focus on those three, studio, drawing, drafting, and design, and studio media art, and of course, our two electives, which is screen printing and ceramics and sculpture. Those are ninth grade. And then on to music. Um, these are our three areas of music offerings, um, band, chorus, orchestra, pretty straightforward. Um, the majority of our ninth graders are all going to go into that first level ensemble. So for band, you'd go into concert band, uh, chorus into chorale, and orchestra into symphonic orchestra. So that's basically your path um, if you're coming from eighth to ninth grade. But we do 
um, open up the honors level courses to ninth graders, but it is audition based. So if your student is feeling like they really want to challenge themselves with some really incredibly rigorous college level music, uh, we encourage them to do it, get a hold of the music. Um, auditions will be, that information will be coming out very soon, um, but auditions will start to happen um, in each of the areas. So our honors level um, wind ensemble, Honora Lavoci, and our string ensemble, again, are audition based. They are open to ninth graders, but you would have to go through that audition process to get into those ensembles. Okay. And then we do offer um, two other music electives that are non-performing based. Uh, we have our AP music, which is uh, 11th and 12th grade. So that's something that they can always think about and know. I know our teachers talk about it in class all the time. Um, it's really the academic side kind of, of music. It's how music is formed, how the notes actually go from, um, you know, from on the page. You know, how, do, how does that structure work? Um, that's what music theory is all about. And it is an AP course, so they would get college credit. And then we also offer our auto engineering and music production class. That course is open to ninth graders. It is a full year, every other day class. And they're able to really learn um, from a, a, a studio perspective what music is. They're able to manipulate their music. They're able to go in and create their own um, on a computer using a keyboard and um, the computer itself. We have an incredible uh, Mac lab that's up upstairs for our music production kids. Um, they come to concerts. They can record concerts. They take that material back, manipulate it, make it a production worthy, and then have it um, for our ensembles to use. Um, but that's really an, a, a really incredible computer-based music class that um, we encourage um, any ninth grader that's interested. Um, they don't necessarily have to be in a performing ensemble to take it. Um, th if they just have that interest in learning how to, to run Pro Tools, how to create music through a computer, um, this is their course. And we also offer uh, dance. We have an incredible um, high school choreography and dance course um, that is open to ninth grade. Again, it's a full year, every other day course. Um, and they do perform at the uh, Performing Arts Showcase in June. So that's always um, something the kids are able to learn all the different genres and, and areas of dance. Then they create their own dance performance and they do um, get showcased um, as a, in a performance setting um, at the end of the year. So a great performance-based class. We have a beautiful brand new dance studio upstairs. Um, so we encourage any ninth grader who has a love of dance to, to take our choreography and dance. And then new for next year, um, once they do complete that ninth grade course, um, they can go on to advanced choreography and dance um, in the upper levels. So we're really excited about this in the music department as well. Okay. On to business. Um, so this is our newly structured business offerings uh, for the district. Um, our two ninth grade offerings next year um, will be the foundations of business and business communications. Those are the two courses in our business department that are open to ninth graders. Um, but what those do is they really provide a basis and a grounding for our three um, areas of business, which is business administration, finance, and marketing. So you'll see those two courses offered to ninth graders up at the top, and then we have a very robust um, series of courses under each of the areas, uh, business administration, finance, and marketing. The two in the middle, the um, right underneath each category, are op open to 10th graders and up. And then the, the bottom two um, are college level courses, which are open to 11th and 12th grade courses, uh, students. So those two, two courses in highlighted in yellow are the ones that would be open for ninth graders. But as you can see, there's so much to offer uh, under the business and the, the different areas. We encourage those kids to take that ninth grade course, get their foundation, get a, a, a really a, a sampling basically of all of the areas and then they can really pick and choose and see how they want to, see if they're interested in going the business route, um, what categories they would be most interested in. And of course our virtual enterprise, an incredible opportunity for 11th and 12th graders. They go through the whole process of creating a business. Um, they have a CEO, they have a CFO, they have a marketing team, they have a, a pitch team, they have all of this um, and they actually go through and go through the whole process of creating a business. So. Um, the, they compete in challenges all across the Long Island. Um, it's just, they have so much fun and it's, it's such a, a real life um, opportunity for them to really go through the process of creating a small business. So 
also those are our business offerings. If you have any questions, please ha don't hesitate to reach out to any of the teachers. Uh, you know we have a dynamite art, music, and business staff. Um, they're happy to answer questions, or feel free to email me, and I'll be happy to help too. Thank you very much. And I'm going to invite Ms. King. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Keene. I'm the Director of Physical Education, Health, Athletics, and Drivers Education. Uh, in terms of physical education, every student in grades 9 through 12 must take and pass physical education each semester to graduate. The structure and foundation of physical education is to promote a healthy lifestyle and encourage positive behaviors. We offer numerous uh, options within the course for student choice and engagement, as well as fostering lifelong fitness and wellness. Health is also a required course, course for all of our students. For the first time uh, this coming year, health is being offered to students in grades 10 through 12 and can be taken either for a semester every day or for a full year every other day. The course uh, your child goes into will be based on their specific schedule availability. Our health course covers the makeup of the human body and its functions while enforcing the key concepts of properly maintaining and promoting a healthy lifestyle in, continually, in a continually changing environment. There's a premise of developing positive behaviors with an emphasis on eliminating, be, on eliminating behaviors that negatively affect a healthy lifestyle and place an individual or individuals at risk. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at any time. Thank you. I'd now like to bring up Dr. Morla Chance, our supervisor of special education. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Morla Chance. I'm the supervisor of special education. Um, and I just want to say, if your student is coming from middle school with an IEP, a lot of the procedures and the programs that you are familiar with will be similar as you transition to high school. Um, you know, at your child CSE meeting is when your the IEP is developed um, with your entire team, and it's really created just to ensure that instruction is specialized to really tailor um, and enhance your child's unique strengths and needs. Um, all decisions are made at these CSE meetings and you'll have a CSE meeting, your annual review meeting in the spring. Um, by spring though, we really mean like we start in February um, and we try to end by May, um, just to really ensure that everyone has ample time, both administration and teachers to plan effectively for the next year. Um, we have a whole host of programs and services here at WANTA. Um, we have related services, so students might have an IEP with just related services, such as occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, speech therapy, counseling, parent training. Um, but you could also have a student that doesn't have an IEP and just needs to meet with the psychologist, either temporarily, just going through a hard time, or maybe for the whole year. Um, but, but those services are also offered to our general education students. So, Please know that that's also available to your students if they ever need. Um, some of our programs include Resource Room. It's one of our least restrictive programs where a student is in general education classes, but for one period a day, um, they're scheduled to meet with a special education teacher and where they just target their unique, you know, really skills that are identified on their IEP that they just need to improve. Um, Followed by that would be a little bit more restrictive, which would be integrated co-teaching. Integrated co-teaching is where there's two teachers, both a gen ed teacher and a special ed teacher that teach simultaneously. So they might be up at the front of the room, both team teaching, kind of finishing each other's sentences. Some provide a little bit more support. Um, sometimes they might do small group work. Um, but there's students in those classes with IEPs and students without. So even if your child doesn't have an IEP, um, they might have had the luxury of being in those classes. Um, and there's really a benefit for both students in those classes. There's a lot of, a whole you know, plethora of research that really supports the benefits of ICT for both students with or without IEPs. So it's a really great program. Um, we also, for students who need more support, we have small special classes, whereas the class sizes are capped at 15 students, so there's no more than 15 students in a class, one teacher and one assistant. 
Um, oftentimes our classes are even a little smaller than that, so students receive really individualized instruction um, based on their needs. We also have a hybrid approaches where, again, like other directors have mentioned, they're not tracked, where students can be in ICT for some classes and special class for others. Um, there is some, you know, we, there are some constraints based on the schedule, but we try to do that when possible to make sure that we're really tailoring the IEP to the unique, you know, strengths and needs of your child. Um, IEPs also have modifications and accommodations, and this is just to ensure access um, to the curriculum, to ensure their success and make sure they can participate in the curriculum. Um, modifications just alter what is taught, whereas accommodations alter how it's taught. So you could have a student with poor visual acuity, so they might just have enlarged handouts. Same content, just larger. Um, students who have demonstrating difficulty uh, sustaining attention, they might just have breaks um, on their IEP that, to ensure that they have motor breaks or whatever type of breaks they need to help them remain focused. Um, we also have students who have test accommodations. Um, these, are, again, are developed at the CSC meeting at their annual review meeting and are evaluated every year. We want to try to strive for independence, um, but we want to make sure that students are tested on their content knowledge um, and they're not limited to the effects of their disability. So sometimes students might have extra time or even breaks, uh, you know, test accommodations of that nature. Um, we also have students that have 504 plans, and 504s might have test accommodations or other program modifications and accommodations as well listed on there. Overall, that's pretty much it, but if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me at any time. Again, you could reach out to the building uh, psychologists as well. We have Dr. Caitlin Wong um, and Ms. Lemire. They're very knowledgeable about all things special ed, so you could reach out to them at any time, whether your child has an IEP or not. And thank you. Um, next up is Doc. I, I ready to do it again, Mr. Frank Musio. Okay. Dr. Lachance gives me way too much credit. Uh, my name is Frank Musio. I'm the director of guidance and family consumer sciences. Uh, in my role as director of guidance, I, I try to see how all of these wonderful courses that you've heard about tonight fit into your child's day. They get a nine period day. And so for family consumer science, uh, well, let me put it this way. Your child generally, every eighth into ninth grader is gonna get one period for electives, generally. So that means a child could take electives in art, music, business, technology. Am I missing? Family consumer sciences. Uh, so our two electives uh, happen to be culinary foundations and uh, the goal of, of the culinary uh, strand, let's say, is to prepare students for adulthood. We, uh, we want them to be able to create a budget, create a food budget, be able to create some meals on their own. And we always know we're doing a good job when they come back to us and say, oh, Mr. Musio, we tried this at home. I say, that's great. Before they try chopping vegetables at home, in culinary foundations, we teach them how to chop vegetables safely. We teach them about cross-contamination. We teach them about um, uh, heat and uh, properties of nutrition and things like that. So, uh, but it's a popular elective because we do this in, in, a fun, in a fun way and in a fun lab. Our other strand that is a ninth grade potential elective for your child would be adolescent development. And adolescent development is uh, a course that is experiential in its focus. We have students who uh, are, uh, want to be teachers in the future or they want to be uh, involved in healthcare fields and things like that and getting to know uh, uh, young children and adolescents and they are adolescents themselves. So a lot of the themes that are discussed in adolescent development are things that, that students are going through now, and things like puberty and things like uh, healthy relationships and so on. So that is another very popular elective. Another uh, element that makes adolescent development a very popular course is our play group. And we have play group in each of the three offerings 
in our human develop, de development strand. Playgroup is uh, a program where children, preschool children, uh, come into our child development lab uh, twice a week and they interact with our high school students. And so as our students are learning about developmental theory, they're watching developmental theory before they arise by, by these young children. So it's, it's a very, another very popular elective. So your child will sit with uh, their middle school counselor in choosing these electives and, and these two, Culinary Foundations and Adolescent Development, are among very popular and, and really valuable electives that they can choose from. The Guidance Department. Guidance Department uh, in the middle school as uh, they transition to the high school, slight difference. Slight difference in that we are really preparing them in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade to transition out of school and to transition into college and post high school planning. We're gonna give them a little bit more uh, responsibility than maybe we did in middle school. Middle school we might have been a little bit more active in solving their problem. In high school we're gonna try to give them the skills and the communication skills to help them solve their problems with our support. And so that is gonna be an increasing focus. We are still very much available, just as the middle school counselors are. We're very much available by phone and by email, and we really pride ourselves in our outreach to parents. So we will have a parent meeting program for every grade level. So in ninth grade, we'll have parent meetings in late November, just after the teacher the teacher conferences, we're going to have parent conferences with the guidance department. We'll have them again in 10th grade in May. Uh, 11th grade junior conferences are in March. And senior conferences with their parents are in September. Uh, as you can see, we have really a lot of programs that we offer in the evening and throughout the school day. So we hope that you take advantage of these programs in the next four years. Uh, the freshman experience. Freshman experience is in its third year and it has uh, evolved. It's evolved mostly because of the audience in front of us. And we adapt our lessons to our students and we make them relevant. We don't download uh, you know, cookie cutter lessons you know, off the internet or anything like that. We really brainstorm and we see what the students are really going through. And, and we just finished a lesson on cyber safety, which was really powerful. We uh, did so far this year, study skills, organizational skills, time management. We did goal setting. So we really, again, it's part of that theme of empowerment. We're trying to empower these students. Social emotional learning to us is giving students tools to be better students, to be higher achieving students, and to be resilient adults. And that's, that's our freshman experience program. It's offered once in a six day cycle, just uh, during their, uh, their science lab. So science in a six-day cycle, a science lab will meet twice in that six-day cycle. Usually it's physical education meets three days, and we get that last day. It's not a graded course, which students enjoy, that they're not graded on what we're doing, but they really are engaged because we try to do it in a really fun way. Vocational ed. Uh, it's not relevant uh, at this time because we normally send grade 11s and 12s to vocational ed. But uh, in a conversation I had with Mr. Pappas today, he brought up a very good point that as ninth graders, you build a resume and you uh, have a good record of attendance and you have a good record of academics and then you're a good BOCES candidate. So we, uh, we will accept applications for this year's 10th grade no later than February 1st. And you can keep that in mind two years from now. And uh, as I alluded to Mr. Pappas, our assistant principal, I invited him up. He's going to tell you more about the curriculum guide and next steps in the process. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome and Happy New Year. Um, thank you, Mr. Musio. Uh, my name is Mr. Pappas. I am one of the assistant principals here at the high school. Um, a lot has been thrown at you this evening. I know that there's a lot of hesitation uh, as, as eighth grade families coming into the high school next year. Uh, with that, the course catalog can be overwhelming. So it is found on our website. We do have a brand new website located um, 
you know, when, when you click on it, you, you, at the top, you can click at the high school website. And then if you look at that picture over there on the right, um, click on about, followed by about Wanto High School, and then course offerings. That'll lead you to a place where you can click on the course catalog. The course catalog is extremely user friendly and it is interactive. Uh, what I mean by that is that it's a really long document that instead of scrolling to the area that you would like to search, you can easily click on a department potentially and just go straight to all of the courses found in the science department or in the art department. And that, that'll help guide you through um, all the various programs that we offer here at the high school. So uh, feel free to take a look at that um, on, your own, on your own free time with your, with your child. So uh, eighth graders are going to be meeting with their counselors uh, this month in, in January. Um, teachers will have the opportunity, eighth grade teachers will have the opportunity beginning uh, next Monday to uh, make course recommendations for current eighth graders for next year um, as they enter high school. Uh, at that point, what will happen is that um, they will, um, you will have the opportunity as well to be able to look at the portal on, on Infinite Campus to see what those recommendations are. Um, those recommendations, you know, they are temporary because students, you know, children, they do change their mind quite often. Uh, they may feel like they want to take one course on one day, but then the next day they, they will change their mind and they might want to take something else. So we are all about transparency. So uh, you will be getting a notification from me and how to be able to access all those course recommendations for your, your children. At first, it, it will look a little bizarre. For example, all incoming ninth graders are placed into um, English 9R, Global 1R, um, Algebra 1, and Earth Science. Now, I know you might be saying, well, my child might be currently taking Earth Science in the middle school and Algebra 1 in the middle school. That will be changed. Um, it's just a default initial kind of placeholder for eighth graders go, coming into ninth grade. So as, they, uh, as students meet with their counselors and as teachers make those recommendations, they will change that. So if you do see that, you're, you know, that your child was recommended for Algebra 1R, um, you know, don't be alarmed. That will be changed once teachers make those recommendations. So um, that will happen in a, a two week uh, time span and that'll begin on Monday. The deadline for that will be uh, probably, I think, January 19th, uh, no, January 18th. And um, at that point, uh, recommendations will be, the, w the recommendation window will close and counselors will have the opportunity to meet with all eighth graders and kind of solidify a, a, a request, uh, requests for next year. Um, that being said, rec requests are different than recommendations because recommendations are temporary, right? Uh, requests are what they actually are requesting to take next year as ninth graders in the high school. Um, in February, about the week before February break, you will be receiving a, another notification from us at the high school that outline all the courses that your child is requesting for next year. And the week of February break or leading into February break, um, they will have about one more week to potentially change their mind um, if they want to. Um, but once we, once February, you know, the Friday before February break comes, we enter what we call a frozen zone. What that means is that I go into schedule building mode. And in schedule building mode, which begins March 1st, um, there are no changes or no, yeah, there are no request changes uh, with, the with the exception of special education um, because as I build the schedule, um, I can't have multiple moving targets, which makes perfect sense. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean that there can't be a change of heart. If there's a change of heart uh, in mid-March or early April, and your child says, you know, I really don't want to take this course, but I want to take that course. It doesn't mean that it can't happen. It just means that it's not a guarantee. Um, so when the schedule opens up in June, one final time, and, this, and all courses are scheduled for each and every one of your children, um, 
another notification will be sent to you communicating that these are the courses that your child is actually scheduled for in ninth grade. And at that point, they can have another opportunity to make one final change prior to, um, you know, prior to um, the, the summer and leading into freshman year. So there are opportunities to be able to change um, scheduling, uh, but there is that frozen period that um, begins March 1st into, into the middle of June. Um, we do communicate along the way so that you guys are updated and kept in the loop as to the progress. Um, but we do encourage you to take a look at the parent portal as those recommendations are being modified by the middle school counselors this month because that will help solidify what they do want to take. And there is a lot of uncertainty. And, you know, your child may want one thing, but you, as you have conversations with them, um, you, you collectively decide what what works best you know scheduling is tricky because it's not necessarily just one course it's really a holistic approach and and taking a look at what the whole package looks like so I do understand that that can be you know challenging at times so um, as as such take a look at the portal and have those conversations and communicate with the middle school counselors as as this process evolves in January and February um, in August, your child will then meet the high school counselors, as Mr. Musio said, and at that point, uh, we do have our freshman orientation, where they finally will receive their schedules, which outlines not only what courses they're taking, but also when in the day those courses fall. Um, and that happens again at freshman orientation. Um, monitor your email, like I said before. Um, we do communicate quite frequently with our families um, to keep everyone in the loop um, as, as, as the scheduling process evolves in the next few months. And again, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, you know, one thing uh, outlined on this slide specifically is that, you know, all freshmen are um, enrolled in a minimum of eight academic periods with one period being lunch. And one difference in high school is that lunch doesn't necessarily fall all in one period like it does in the middle school. Uh, students can, ninth graders can take lunch anywhere between periods four through eight. Um, and that is to add the flexibility uh, because a high school's a, a high schooler schedule is more complex than a middle schooler schedule, so having a, additional places for a child to have lunch will actually ensure that each child gets what they requested, um, you know, for their ninth grade schedule. So that being said, I do want to close it off by inviting up Dr. Gazone. Thank you so much um, for coming this evening. Uh, I know again it is that it is uh, anxious as eighth grade families. Um, again, if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're all here to help. Thank you. All right. Uh, before we close up and open up for some questions, I always like to give a nice shout out to our parent organizations, uh, 612, uh, Wanter Sports Booster, SEPTA, and the uh, newly formed uh, Performing Arts Booster uh, organization, who now um, combined with the, uh, it was the bandwagon and the drama association kind of combined to support all our theater pro, uh, all our fine and performing art programs. Uh, so if you have kids involved um, in these areas, I highly encourage you to, to join them uh, so they can help support the kids in all their, their endeavors. Um, it's definitely a lot, and just a couple of things to keep in mind. Is that this is pre -recorded. it's recorded? You can go back to the presentation, um, you know, uh, tomorrow or the next day when it gets posted online. The course catalog has a lot of information, and we're here to answer uh, your questions. Should you should you uh, want to reach out to us directly? But before we close up shop, um, I'm uh, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, as you uh, move up, I don't think we have any college or AP level courses at, at the ninth grade level. We have pre-AP, uh, like preparatory. Um, essentially, um, AP is driven by the college board. Um, it's a prescribed curriculum uh, that, in theory, right, uh, it's, it's a course, if you're taking AP World, uh, whether you're here in uh, Wanto taking AP World, or if you're in China somewhere taking AP World, it's the same course. Right, you could, 
you know, if you could understand, how, if you know both languages, you can move to China today or tomorrow, and it, you're, in theory, be in the same spot, right? Um, it's, a, it's a prescribed program, and it's uh, well-known across uh, the world, uh, very similar to IB that other school, some other schools have. Um, college is a little different. Uh, so if you were taking, say, college English here versus college English in Texas, uh, we all used, we all have different partnerships with different college programs. Um, so our, what we do here might be different, actually, if you go to uh, school in Texas tomorrow for college English, because they're going to be following, uh, I don't know, University of Texas uh, uh, college curriculum. Uh, what, I, what we like to try to do is if there's an AP offering uh, for a certain content, we like to offer that. Um, and then if, th if there's not, uh, we would try to default to maybe like finding a college level course to kind of fill that void. Sometimes we have some overlap between AP and college, uh, depending, just to offer some options to students. Uh, as students move on to uh, senior year, and they look to ap uh, apply. Uh, both college and AP level courses are, are, are very nice to have on a transcript. Um, you know, in terms of credits, uh, in terms of the AP courses, there's an AP exam that culminates at the end. It's very standardized. Um, if a student takes an exam, it scores a three, four, or five. Um, some, most, a couple, few, depending. Uh, it always changes. Uh, they'll take that score of a three, four, or five, and they potentially will give you a credit in the university for scoring that three, four, or five. Uh, if you take a college course and you meet the minimum requirement of whether it might be 70, 75, depends on different colleges, uh, they'll grant you credit from their college. So you would actually, um, you would pay money uh, to the college to issue that credit. You would have a transcript that you would actually send to a college that you uh, maybe have been admitted to. And that college may or may not take that credit as well, right? Uh, but the way I always like to look at it is, at this point in time, like I wouldn't necessarily worry about getting the credit or not, right? To me, it's more about right now, like finding the right avenue, the right interest, and the right pathway for your child. Uh, because if even if you don't get the credit, you're building a nice resume. You're building something uh, when you apply to a, a university. They're going to look at uh, student X's transcript and say, "Oh, look, they took uh, this array of courses versus someone who didn't." And even if you don't get the college credit, you might get in because of the, uh, a child might get into a university because they took those courses, right? Uh, so that could give an edge there. So I wouldn't. I always say don't stress or over worry about the credit component because honestly what I tell you today could change in four years and, and, and colleges may take yes or they might, they might take AP and they might not take college or vice versa. Just find the right pathway for your child and we'll figure it out. Okay. Um, and honors is just uh, any course that we don't really have a college or AP level. Uh, we just offer a little bit more of acceleration, um, uh, increased rigor, that could potentially prepare kids to take a college or AP level course later on. Uh, I saw a hand back there. Yep. You want to talk about? That? Yeah, we'll clarify. When he comes, can you just come to the mic? Yeah. So the selection form is for the electives. So I apologize for clarifying. Um, incoming ninth graders have a, all the, you were you were presented with a, a bunch of electives today um, by all the directors. So that is to let the middle school counselors know kind of what the first choice, second choice, third choice that the eighth graders um, are choosing for next year. So it's primarily for their elective period. Um, in, in ninth grade, art and music occupies one period, and then there's one other period um, where they can take an elective, and it could be two courses that potentially um, are offered every other day for the full year. It could be two semester-based electives um, in any of the departments that were presented tonight. So that you, that you will see as those recommendations are added by the middle school teachers. Um, you'll have access to that information as you look through the portal. So um, it all depends on when the teacher makes that recommendation and when they submit it, but they will have um, up until the 18th. You still have time between January 18th and, and February break to make those decisions as, as they become final. Um, and you'll have access to that on the portal and by talking to the middle school counselor. You're welcome. Sure. No. So
So it could be one or the other or both, right? So there are two periods. So if they are into art and music, they could have they could occupy one of those periods with an art course, and they could occupy the and fill the other period with a music course if they choose. But correct. So the one of the periods will satisfy the art music requirement for graduation, and then the other period is really a choice of theirs, something that they love doing, and that could also be art but it could also it could be culinary it could be it could be a business elective it could be um, anything that was presented this evening yeah so yeah. I'll talk yeah. about that next Great and, question. and just uh, uh, just uh, as a follow-up to the art question right also you know the project lead the way interior engineering design course also counts as an art credit right so if they wanted to take that in lieu of art or band that would also count Okay. Now, in terms of science research, I did want to touch about that. I know some families are interested in, in pursuing the Science Research Academy program. Uh, for all intents and purposes right now, where, like, you're, well, when you fill out your uh, interest sheet for electives, you're going to pretend like no one's, no one's getting into the Science Research Academy. Uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to fill out you know, the, the elective block, and then the decision later on about the academy will happen in February, roughly. And at that time, if someone decides to uh, go into the academy, then those electives will come out, and the, the elective, the uh, research academy course will fill that. Or if someone decides, you know what, it's not for me, then we already have, we already knew what they were going to take, right? We knew that they were going to take these electives. So, uh, in terms of the elective slip, uh, you're going to, whether you're interested in the research academy or not, you can pretend that it doesn't even exist, just for the initial schedule purpose, and those changes will be made later on as we advance through that that process. Other questions? Yeah. So the window, it happens at different times for the high school and the middle school. So the high school teachers just completed their recommendations for current high schoolers because scheduling for, for the high school happens a little bit earlier than the middle school. Uh, but eighth grade, eighth grade recommendations for ninth, coming into ninth grade will begin on Monday. So those teachers will begin that process on Monday and it'll, they'll have about two weeks to fulfill and complete those recommendations. Um, you will have access to view that from the beginning, but like I said earlier, you'll see those placeholders in the, in the core courses and they're, they're temporary because those teachers may not have made the recommendation just yet. Yeah, it it's uh, I believe it's January eighteenth, right? Yes. Yep, junior year. Uh, at this time, no uh, ninth grade. Uh, there's no honor societies that any ninth graders are eligible for. Yes. No. So New York State, New York State said, yeah, New York State says you have to take at least one credit in art or music. Okay, so it's not end, right? So it's it's one or the other. So if they're more musically inclined and they want to take a, a music course, that's fine. Then they can take music. Then then they don't need to visit the art strand. It, it's one or the other. Yep. Uh, so there's really just one period for electives. Right uh, on a standard cookie cutter schedule, right? Um, because what we, you end up having is you have English, you have soul studies, uh, you have science with gym, right? Uh, English soul studies, English soul studies, science with gym because it has the lab. Uh, you have the math, you have world language, you have art or music, you have lunch, which is eight, which gives you that one elective block. With the caveat too, right? The caveat is if your child uh, maybe needs some additional support for, let's say, an ELA lab or a math lab. Okay, now, now you know that cuts that uh, to a every other day elective, which we do have for ninth graders, a handful of them. Um, uh, if your ch child qualifies for maybe uh, like general ed lab, algebra, algebra lab support or geometry lab support and ELA lab support, that's it. There's no more electives, right? Because that that fills that spot. 
Uh, if a child is a, a child has an IEP, let's say per se, and they have a um, resource room and they don't have, qualify for a world language exemption, right? That means that that resource room might take the place of that elective, right? So uh, a standard cookie cutter schedule, I would say, is you have that one block. However, um, the uh, it, it it could be unique to an individual based on on their needs and and interests as well. Yeah. Um, just to add to that, so with that one block, you might your child might have an interest in an elective that is offered semester based and then the other thing that they're interested potentially could be a full year every other day that won't work when you're kind of putting it together in that one block so it's really it could be two electives that are offered every other day for the full year or two semester based electives but like Dr. Gazon said some of the labs math labs um, ELA lab are offered on a full year alternate day basis, so they can parlay that with an elective that is offered full year alternate day. So that is all worked out with the middle school counselor and on the sheet that you will see when they bring it home, all of the electives are coded with, to see for you guys to see as well if they are a semester based elective or a full year alternate day elective. Um, yeah, got it. Yes. No, um, right, so it, it looks that way, right, uh, just because it's just a little different than other courses, right? So if a kid's, a child's in algebra, um, a child's in algebra honors in eighth grade versus a child's in grade eight in math, the reason why there's two tracks, math is like the only one where it, it, it's a little different than the other content areas, because you are f almost like a full year ahead, right? So you're ahead, like you're gonna go to geometry, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean that that you can't toggle into these other honors level courses, right? Yes, it's true if you're a child's in grade eight, we don't offer a honors level algebra uh, in ninth grade, but as they advance past algebra uh, one in ninth grade, if you look at like geometry as ROH, right? So that indicates regions or, or honors level, right? Uh, algebra two, regions or honors level, uh, and so on. So the ninth grade is the only one where we don't typically have an honors uh, level for, for that course because typically they're kind of like at the eighth grade level. But once they, once they toggle past that or navigate past that ninth grade algebra one R, uh, they have that ability to, to go into an honors level track. Okay. Yep, yes. Yep, so every freshman takes it. Um, it's, uh, it's programmatic and it's 40 minutes. So it's taught by two counselors or two of our PPS members. So it could be uh, two guidance counselors, it could be a guidance counselor and a uh, social worker, a guidance counselor and a psychologist, a guidance counselor and Mr. Muzio. It could, be, it could be me popping in every now and then. Um, so uh, it's programmatic. Every, every kid gets it, it's 40 minutes. And what I love about it is, it's, what's beautiful about it is, in my opinion, is that uh, you know, I think making connections is so important, especially for students coming into the high school. If you think about it, a child could potentially have like three counselors. They could have their counselor, and they could have the counselor, two counselors who are their teachers for the freshman experience class. So they're making so many connections just with uh, support personnel in the building right off the bat, right? If, if, you know, they, they, if there's ever a crisis or a moment and their core counselor isn't there, they're in the counseling office and there's two other counselors or, or uh, PPS members that know your child just through this class, right? And, and the kids aren't losing anything. Uh, by design, a couple of years ago, that, that freshman experience period, that, that one day in a six-day cycle was just a study hall. So kids were getting nothing out of it other than just sitting on their, their Chromebooks because it was a, a study hall. So we, we, we kind of saw a nice little window to say how could we better support our students uh, with the staff that we have and use that once in a six day cycle block as something meaningful. And it's really, it's really been just a, an amazing program in, in, in its third year. Um, the counseling department has really taken ownership of it and it's doing great things, it really is. Yes. Uh, that information comes out, Mr. Muzio, in the summer? In the summer? Yeah, and it comes out in the summer. Any other questions? Yeah. Once in a six day cycle. Correct. Right. Yes. So, Science Lab is like, let's say, day one, three, right? One, three, and then freshman experience would be day five, and PE would be days two, four, six. 
And it could be any comment. It could be like lab is one and five and freshman experience day three. But yes, the science core class, and then they have a lab that goes with that science class. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, you, I don't know, sometimes, Mr. So Pabbas could ask that. It's about where they schedule, right? It's, it really depends on what, where in the day um, those courses are placed. Um, so part of what I do, um, I look at all the requests and I look at what conflicts with what. So I, I avoid that problem so that the kids can take what they requested. So for example, if I run a report and I see that there are zero conflicts between two particular courses, then I can potentially place them on the same period because no one will ever run into that problem. So that's part of the puzzle that I work through you know, in March and April and May to make sure that I minimize that so that every kid can take what they want. It's not common, but it does happen, right? Yeah, on, on certain, certain opportunities. So um, it's like, that's kind of like a unique scenario, yeah. But it does happen. Any other questions? No, no, I don't see any more hands. All right. So with that, uh, that is uh, 8 into 9. I hope you guys enjoyed our presentation. Okay, get home safe. I will stick around or I'll stick around if anyone wants to come up and, and chit-chat to me. All right. Uh,